T-R-P-E The realest podcast ever, realest podcast ever Two brothers bringing thinking on a second level Music, sports, fashion, politics, and the streets The best two hours out of every week YDN, dinosaurs, and YBODs Real talk every time, this is what you need We just out here popping shit It's your boy C. Diddy and Matt makes me sick T-R-P-E, T-R-P-E, go T-R-P-E, T-R-P-E, go They know The realest podcast ever The realest podcast ever Yeah We back, man I am not sick this week You over here fucking with my levels (laughs) I'm messing with the levels Matt's like, that's Matt's like I'm like, what? He's like, that's me, nigga. Stop. Stop touching shit. It's either super loud or I can't hear <laughs> shit now. I oh. couldn't hear shit. That's why I got up and messed with it. I don't touch this box. I don't know what's going on with this shit. All right. I think I... All right. Yeah. Now I'm good. There we go. All right. Yeah. Nice, even levels for everybody. Yeah. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? As you're, as the music is starting, it's getting louder. And I'm, I'm watching you. I'm like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> Ew. Oh man. We back, man. The realest podcast ever. Episode number fifty seven. Shit is filthy in here. Is it fifty seven or fifty six? Fifty seven. Shit. Yeah, we rolling, baby. Yeah. Shit is filthy. Got my, my one of my partners from the club is calling me right now. I can't answer. Sorry, Brian. Yeah. Can't answer him doing the show. Doing the show, Pop. That shit is filthy in here. Shit is hilarious. <laughs> yeah. He didn't say that. Oh, they filming in here. He said she is filming it. She is filming that, it. Like, and you can tell the camera caught him off guard. Because if you look at it on his page, it's just him in the room already talking to him. But when he walks in and sees, oh, shit, she is filming it. <laughs> That's what he says. But the shit is filthy in here. It Nonetheless. Just, it was just hilarious. <laughs> that was just fun to have, to have some, some good jokes with. But yeah, he definitely said she is filming in here. Because not everybody wants to always be on camera 24 seconds. You know what I mean? <laughs> But that is funny Yeah that's a good title too. I like that What's up with you though Oh man Nothing much man Like I said uh, uh, I successfully defeated my cold uh, I'm, I'm on like the uh, Ninth level out of ten I'm basically like 90% right now I'm down to blowing my nose Like one time an hour So I'll take that as a victory And uh, I don't feel like I'm gonna die anymore And I'm not riding around With a big ass box Of uh, Kleenex again Well Uh you defeating your cold means uh, leaving it at my house <laughs> because I, now I am. I've been sick these past couple of days. Um, I was cool, honestly, till Friday night. It just like it was so much up in here mm-hmm. that, that, that I literally got up. I'm, I, I told my my girl, I'm like, yo, I I, I can't sleep. Like, yeah. And I, I I do a 13 hour run on Saturday, and I'm in a position where I can't call out, right? Because I'm calling out in a couple of weeks, so. Right. And then you you know it's a thirteen hour run, and then we get the holiday tomorrow. So if you don't work your last day before, they won't pay you. The they holiday. won't pay you the holiday. So it's like twenty something hours. You know what I'm I saying? I need this. I'm like I gotta go. <laughs> but I'm like I literally I couldn't get no rest. I'm sweating. My fucking eyes is leaking. Nose is stuck. I'm, I'm like, let me go to the ER. I went over there. It was no one in the ER. Like yeah. empty. So that was cool. Went in, boom, boom, boom. K Ray and doctor, like, yeah, this shit is going around. Uh, I'm going to give you some Benadryl. This is what you need, though. You need to go get Flonix. And I'm like, yeah. He was like, no, I'm telling you. He's like, matter of fact, you got good insurance. I'm going I'm to give you a prescription. You ain't got to pay for it. I'm pretty sure. I'm like, oh, okay, bet. Shoot over to the all night CVS. Boy, like, yeah, your insurance covers it. Boom, boom, boom. He gave me yeah. the prescription Flonase. I'm talking about, I'm walking out the CVS. <laughs> <laughs> Two of them. I get in the car and I'm like, a whole new fucking yeah. world out here. <laughs> like, like I hate this sick last day and a half. I'm talking about I'm I'm cool. Right. I come back in the crib all smiling, happy monkey. The fuck? Did you go to the hospital? I'm like, yeah, yeah. I got the flow days. I'm straight now. <laughs> and like I said, and I went to sleep, man. I got back up, worked the whole day. I don't know how the fuck I made it through. I literally yeah. only slept for two hours, but we did it. Yeah, so. no, it's definitely something going around. My young boy Rob, he got sick the other day. He said his girl went somewhere, was around some filthy people, came back home, got him sick. Now he been on his deathbed. He ain't left the crib in four days. Yeah. He better he better go with some Flonays apparently. Listen, I, I'm not an advocate for the uh, <laughs> the uh, medical industry or none of that. You know, the pharmaceutical industry. But I'm telling you, I, apparently Flonays is expensive. I don't know. <laughs> I have insurance. I didn't pay for it, but. The shit works. I'm telling you. Right. I mean, literally, because the, what the the doctor at the hospital told me, because I was like, I'd use the Vicks, uh, the moisturizing spray, yeah. sort of like uh, what's the other one? Efren, I think is the name yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah. And then there's the uh, ugh, 
of course I can't remember them, but the nasal sprays. Yeah. He was like, yeah, all those nasal sprays you see in Rite Aid, CVS, they junk. Don't use them. <laughs> I'm like, why? He was like, because it's it's no, it's no like not real medicine in it. Okay. He's like, Flonase is a steroid. So when that shit hits your nasal uh, passage, it literally like, it expands everything. And I was like, so where does the sinus infection come from? He's like, basically, your nasal will open up and then close. That's where your stuffiness comes from. Yeah. But with it opening and closing, bacteria could get in there. And when it gets in there and your nasal is shut, closed, yeah. that's where a sinus infection. I'm like, ah, oh, I see what you're saying. Gotcha. So he was like, the flow nays literally just, it, it it just blows everything up. Right. And he, listen, I'm talking about I walked out the CVS, <laughs> two shots, and I'm, I'm talking, I turned the Drake up, <laughs> sunroof open, <laughs> five in the morning, I'm cool going back to the crib. That shit's amazing, yo. Shout out to the flow nays. Oh, man. But, uh, yeah, other than that, man, uh, you know, I'm on this diet thing, so I can't eat anything. You just straight vegetables, fruit, water, right? No fruit. No fruit. Can't have no sugar. Straight vegetables. Straight vegetables. So. Can you eat greens? No. Factor that in to me being sick as shit on Friday. Fuck. How did I make it Saturday? I still don't know. Right. But. Um, like all real niggas, I have cheated. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I'm not, I haven't crazy cheated, but you know, I've cheated. I, I you, you got to drink water. Basically that what this is what's on the list. Water, any vegetable. Yeah. Sugar-free water ice, sugar-free popsicles and jello. Okay. So you can't eat shit. You know what I mean? So been pretty miserable the, the, the first couple of days trying to figure that shit out. But other than that. You know, I'm alive. Yeah. Got a lot going on in the next couple of weeks. So it is what it is. I see you're back to being old Chad and shit. I mean, I'm out here. <laughs> <laughs> hate this dude, yo. I'm, I'm out here. You know what I mean? But yeah, the, uh, the diet is, is, the first day was funny. I went, I went to my job. My man, he like, he know about it. And I'm just like, yeah, it's been the roughest seven days of my life. He like, damn, you've been doing it a week. I'm like, I started this morning. <laughs> But this shit feel like, feels like a week. It feel like it's been going on for a week. Like when you get up in the morning and you can't have breakfast, like you got to eat broccoli. That shit is something that else. Sucks. Seriously, I'm trying to explain it to my other homie the other, the other day. I'm like, like I had cabbage for dinner the other night. That was it. So you got to eat vegetables. So I was like, I, I had cabbage, and I was at work and I pulled out a bowl that was like this big. And he's like, Why the fuck do you have that much cabbage? I'm like, This is what I'm eating. And he was like, I s- like, you know how normally you have a bowl this big and it's a meal in here? Yeah. It's like a thigh, a breast. <laughs> all that shit all is cabbage. gorgeous. This shit is all, that's so, dealing with that. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's for the greater good. So, is what it is. And uh, when is your procedure? Uh, the 7th. 7th. Right? So, I'm going to go do that. I'm on vacation, actually, next week. So that's pretty. My vacation actually starts the day of the Roots picnic. Okay, so that's pretty lit. The, uh, you know, I'm gonna go play a bunch of pole crack like a fool. Go ahead and do that. Then uh, when I come home from the hospital, I'm gonna chill for a couple of days. Then the day my vacation is over, I'm gonna call out sick. Okay, and uh, I'll probably sit out for a couple of weeks. And uh, you know, hopefully everything goes right. You know, trying to get rid of this high blood pressure and all this craziness that's going on. This cardiomyopathy crap. My shit is borderline. Like, I, hypertension right in my family, so it's like, I was bound to get it. I'm 35 now. I was bound to get it at some point. My shit is, like, borderline. Like, it's cool, but if I have, like, a bad day, they might be picking me up and taking me to the ER somewhere. So it's like, I've been changing my diet. I got rid of red meat. Um, I cut severely cut back on uh, all, like, white grains, potatoes, rice, all that, and um, my sugar intake, and I just stopped drinking completely. It's, it's, i tell you this, though. Like, doing this, I did this shit, so like, yesterday and today, what's today? Sunday, right? Yeah. Yes, the Saturday and today. So I did it Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Straight. Saturday, I told my, my I'm like, listen, I'm on some bullshit today. You know, like, <laughs> like, you know how we talked about last week? Like, niggas come out the crib. On, like, I know walking out the door, I'm on bullshit today. Because I didn't sleep. I'm exhausted. Right. I know I'm going to be on some bullshit. I know that. But I'm going to try not to draw. But I'll tell you this. Going through two, three days of that, it really make you appreciate. Yeah, one day. Food. Yeah, yeah. Like, I said the other night, I ate spring mix, arugula, um, just it's we had a lettuce assortment. It's just plants. I think it was some baby <laughs> breath in there. Like it really make you appreciate 
grub. Yeah. Like, the shit is nuts, man. And I look like a fucking koala bear eating a big ass <laughs> bowl of like spring mix. Like safari. Yeah. <laughs> Just eating spring mix and shit. And it, it definitely make you appreciate a nice home cooked meal. So, but yeah, other than that, man, I, I, I feel cool. Yeah. Um, you know, now that this uh, sickness thing is, is you know, getting rid of itself, you know, I'm, I'm good. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I got four days to work and then I'm, I'm on chill till the end of June. So, gotcha. You know, let's just get this week done. We got the Roots Picnic thing. This we is s- the last show before the we Roots Picnic. We still don't know what we're doing. We, we still know a little bit. All right. So, we still don't know where we're going. I, I don't even I know. I definitely don't know where I'm going. I have not a clue. All right, so our we we officially have our set time. It's one thirty to two o'clock. Uh, I don't know how much overage or whatever we're allowed to have or whatever, but we got our set time one thirty to two o'clock. Uh, we do have a guest. I was told don't announce the guest because it's a chance that the guest is going to get too high and not make the set time. But we do have a guest. I still I'm don't almost, think we need one. I'm almost, t- but he. I mean, I, I kind of understand it. We've we we've, we've talked I that no told, name about it. I was it. told. Yo, it's a look. I'm trying to get y'all a look. Blah blah blah. I understand the look because you know the root the uh, the uh, the New York roots picnic is in October. Already put our bid in for that. He's like, yeah, it's a chance. He's like, you're probably not going to get it, but you know they, they probably not going to use the same format and all that. They're going to use different people. Whatever. I'm like, yeah, fuck all that. Like, yeah. I'm trying to get on here. So it's like, you know, if we can pull this act successfully or whatever, and it be a good look, and then you know. We can show that you know we put some people in the building. We probably can make a case for the New York one or whatever. Fuck it, the guest is a little baby. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> Fuck you, Talib. You know what I'm saying? Like you playing games, you ain't give me enough information. The guest is we supposed to have a little baby on podcast stage. Talib said, you know, he agreed to do it. Yeah, no, I definitely do it. The problem is we go on at one thirty, but he's going to try to arrange to get him there. But that's supposed to be our guest. If not, then then. Uh, Ao said he may or may not be available, and fuck Ao also. So whatever. Yeah. If not, then we just gonna get up there, kick shit for twenty nine minutes, and then go peruse. That, that's the park. honestly what I think moves. <laughs> is what needs to happen any goddamn way. But yeah, um, I just want to know where we're going and what's happening. Like, are, I still don't know if we're doing this. Well, I was told that it's going to be like a, a like a setup on a stage or whatever. Silent Philly is handling uh, the audio portion of it or whatever. So it's like everybody in the audience will have headphones on where they can directly, you know, hear what we're saying or whatever. Without no, it ain't no. no so it's basically like noise cancellation or whatever. Okay. So whatever's going on around, they'll just hear us. Or, or, oh, so it'll be like this. But they can hear it with the headphones. Exactly. Like it's not just you, you know what's crazy? And I've I'm literally I've watched live podcasts and I'm like, I know nobody's gonna leave from the festivities and come into an auditorium <laughs> and sit down. You know what I'm right, saying? Right. And like I cause I'm I'm just picturing that in my mind, like I know that's not what's happening. Yeah, and I think taking that into account is why the set is only thirty minutes instead of the normal podcast format, which is like an hour, two hours, or whatever, because people are standing, whatever the case may be. So uh, yeah, they'll have headphones on, so they'll be able to, you know, literally hear every word. I already talked to a couple people. They told me they got their tickets. They definitely coming, and they'll be there bright and early to see us go on. So I'm like, oh, that's encouraging. We won't be out there to a completely empty audience. Now here's the catch to, to this weekend: weather going to be ass cheeks. Like, oh, of course, all week. And you know what happens? The show goes on. Yeah, I'm no, just letting you. <laughs> they don't give a fuck at a festival. Just letting y'all know. You know, it's, it's going to be terrible weather this week, the whole week. So yeah. you know what I mean. But, uh, uh, I I've had two people ask me for VIP passes because they are they are so like we said last week they're sold out on roostpicnic.com. Uh I asked Tyler for VIP passes for two people for ride for somebody else that wanted to pay for them. He said, "Oh yeah, cool. Let me look into that." And never got back to me. So he's but, probably still standing in front of uh, Comedy Ground. <laughs> he with, told me about that with the little dog. <laughs> <laughs> he has two little dogs now. Oh, okay. Yeah, he has a uh, he has Ink, which is like the Yorkie, and then he has a French Bulldog now also. Okay. Which I think his name is like Bank or something like that. Shout out to Phil. Phil's listen. Phil still. I literally <laughs> got at Phil for not responding to the DM. He says, "Oh shit, my bad. I've been doing so much. I'm gonna hit you in ten minutes." And I still haven't been <laughs> like we had a whole conversation in front of his store about this. And I still he li- he literally DM me twelve to thirteen pictures of all these sneaks he has. Yeah, big size. Yeah. I'm like, yo, I, I like this. I, I think it was some Jordan 4s, some Jordan 6s, and I forgot what the other one was. I say, how much? I'll, I'll, I'll get all three. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. 
I see him in front. He's a in fact. I was in front of the store. He was in the store. I'm like, yo, Phil in there. Taleb was standing there with Wallow. Taleb, like, yeah. yo, Phil, Phil, come out. I'm like, yo. You sent me the DM with all the sneaks. What's up? Yo, my fault. You're right. I've been doing so much. I'm going to shoot you a DM in 10 minutes. I got you. And uh, a week later, that was probably five, <laughs> six days ago, and I still haven't been responded. So, Phil, get back to my man. Please. One of these days, he'll hit me up when he's super, super bored. You know, he'll figure it all yeah. out. Yeah. Uh, the next uh, sneaker podcast is scheduled to be uh, next week. It's no guarantee that it will be, but I was basically told, like, yo, it'd be a good look, y'all coming off the roofs picnic or whatever, do Snick sneaker podcast. Y'all could do like a brief recap and then go into the sneaker shit. I'm like, yeah, that makes a ton of fucking sense. So. Yeah, as long as your checks come, eh? <laughs> as long as we get paid. What are you doing right now? <laughs> <laughs> as far as I can, we can scrap right all this pushing. Yeah. Right Shit. Fuck all of them get right, get to, the right sneaks. to that shit <laughs> Fuck it But uh Yeah man Like I said Hopefully it's a um, Nice little situation Now that I have that Alright it makes sense Now I can see yeah. why You're saying a guess yeah. Now that makes A little bit of sense It's like we're sitting At a format Cause I'm thinking us Just like you, Meandering like, on a stage Yeah like with my, <laughs> Like like on this show <laughs> like, Ladies y'all look good In here tonight <laughs> Like on that I'm like that's not Gonna make any fucking sense On the fucking Look <coughs> Up there like Arnaz J and Earthquake <laughs> <laughs> Yeah Fucking Earthquake <laughs> But yeah, we'd actually look more like uh, Shang and Lavelle Crawford. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but all right, cool. We we could do uh, Arnaz and fucking Earthquake. Yeah. So if you come in for the Ro- if you come into the Roost picnic for the Rose podcast ever, number one, do not drive. It's nowhere for you to park your car. Number two, our set time is one thirty to two p.m. on the podcast stage. Make your way over. Get you some headphones from Silent Philly. Number three, our scheduled guest is supposed to be Lil Baby. If he makes it or not. I don't know. Yeah. Hopefully he makes it. If not, me and Matt for 30 minutes, then I'm going to go find some hoes. Uh, number four. I'll probably be with Lee and she ain't a hoe. So. Right. Matt's faithful. Number four, I don't know. <laughs> now, uh, what Back time? Back to you in the studio, what, Taylor. What time do we have to be there? I would probably say like an hour ahead of time. Probably okay. Makes- Fair I'm pretty shit. sure you know like how LeBron and them come in with their little bags and <laughs> walk through the tunnel. I'm pretty sure it has to be something like that before we actually go out. I'm pretty I'm sure, sure I- there's some registration period or whatever the case Does may be. Does a bus run down there? A bunch of buses run down there. I don't know what buses though. It's kind of funny that I'm asking you that. <laughs> but, uh, it's, de- it's definitely buses that run down there. It's one that like stops right at Festival Pier. Yeah? I don't <laughs> know what bus it is though. Gotta find that bus. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I'm going to ask some questions and maybe I'll go into my deep. <laughs> Somebody would know something. <laughs> like, I need to figure that out. Because that's how else do you get down there if you can't drive? Uber. Oh, yeah. See, I, I, I like don't Uber. Yeah. So. I Uber all the time. Do you really? Every now and again. I saw you meandering the other day, and that was funny as <laughs> shit. <laughs> you look pissed. But yeah, I never Uber, so I don't. I Ubered when I me, me and Clint when we was in uh, Chicago. Yeah, I remember like they was going to some place, and I was going back to the telly, and uh, I didn't have the Uber shit because I never Uber. Clint was like, "Yeah, I'm about to I'm about to call you an Uber," and he called me an Uber, and it was like a Chevy Avio that like, pulled nope. up, and I was like, <laughs> "Cancel." I was like, "No, <laughs> like, I'm not getting in that." <laughs> I remember old head at my job. He drove a um, what's the the little ass Think of a little car What's it called? A Geo Like an older little it's, car. It was a two door A two door? Mini Cooper? No nah, nah, don't, that, I like the Mini Coopers They're fly the, um, Was it a Geo? Like a Geo uh, Storm? A to, the Echo Oh Toyota Echo to, Toyota Echo They tiny as shit I'm sitting I, my, the, si- the six goes from Broad Nolney to Shelton Hill Mall Super nigger line. It's like super nigger. <laughs> it's like the nigger bullet. Like it comes out of the broad and only and goes straight up to Sheldon Mall. It's like a quick little fifteen minute run. Yeah. But I was doing that, and they had a John. They don't got it no more. Where you would get relieved at Brawl and only. So when you get relieved at Brawl and only, you now have to meander your way back to Broad now, to Twenty Seventh and Allegheny. <laughs> so I court the. The train down to Broad and Allegheny. To Broad Allegheny, and I'm waiting for the 60 to go back to Depot. And I'm sitting on the, the you know, that little walk, that little ledge out there on yeah. Broad and Allegheny. And it's 
back summertime, so everybody out there, and I'm sitting there, old head pull up from my job in an echo, <laughs> like, mm-hmm. yo, you a ride to the default? I'm like, nigga, man, get the fuck out of <laughs> <laughs> I put my hands over my man, get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here, Curtis. <laughs> 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 Yo, you want to ride? I said, You playing games? You think I'm about to hop in that little shit out of it? <laughs> Get the fuck out of it. <laughs> Yo, oh, I was so fucking. I'm like, I've never even seen him drive that. Like, he, he normally has a navigator. Like, like, where did you get this Like, from? just for the day, he has a fucking Echo. I said, No. Y'all got man. any loners? Yeah, yeah. Got this Toyota Echo fleet. <laughs> I said, No, man, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> That was funny as shit. He's still talking. <laughs> he retired. He'll come up to the depot. Remember when you was you ain't want to get in the little car? <laughs> I remember it vividly. Yeah, yeah. Funny as shit. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I gotta find that bus. Figure out what the fuck goes to Festival Pier. Yeah, that's definitely a bus that goes right there because the David Busters and all that shit is it. And that's Delaware Avenue, so it's definitely a bus that's down there. See, I've never even been in the Festival Pier. Me neither. Yeah. No, I'm lying. I've been there one time. I went to a party at Festival Pier probably like ten years ago. It was uh it was like a ten it off situation or whatever. It was a party down there. Um like towards like when you enter Festival Pier you go towards the back and then over to the left they had like a little area and they turned it into a party. It was like a big ass party too. Mm-hmm. They don't let fly shit like that happen in Philly no more. That shit is over. You can't have a party nowhere except like five places. Yeah, I mean that's because the hammers is getting wrong. Yeah, niggas, niggas shoot shit up. That's the problem. So, like, right now, what I was told, somewhere that uh, in New York, they, like, got a movement to literally, sh- they already shut down all the regular clubs. Now, the police are shutting down all the strip clubs. Like, they just shut down Love and Lust the other day, uh-huh. which is, like, the biggest yeah, right. in the city. And... <laughs> um they had 50 on the news. Some uh, 50 cent frequents this club. 50, t- 50 put it on Instagram. Tell me, Why the fuck they got to single me out? A lot of people go to lo- go to love and lust. Like, leave me alone. 50's a funny ass boy. You saw Tierra Mar- Marie is uh, suing him. Yeah. And uh, her ex. I'm yeah, sure. of course. Revenge porn. Yeah. All 50 did was like repost it though. On his yeah, Instagram. but the thing is with 50 is like, yo, you ain't learned your lesson yet because you already got sued for revenge porn before. Yeah. You got sued for seven million. You ended up having to pay like 6.1 or some shit. Yeah. But he's completely out of that shit. He paid that and he paid the sleek audio shit completely off. That nigga makes a, he's crafty. He makes a lot of fucking money. Yeah, man. 50, you saw him going at it with Floyd the other yeah. day and shit. Yeah, 50 know what he's doing. All the Cavs is back in it. <laughs> It's looking. It's gonna be an awful game tonight. That shit is forty to thirty-seven, forty to thirty-nine. Excuse me. At the end of the fucking seconds, thirty seconds left. Yeah, in because the you got you got. Tw- I mean, twelve young bulls against one superstar. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody on the Cavs stinks, and Kevin Love is out. It's gonna be a brutal game tonight. As much as I love Brown and I want him to go to these finals, I already know what's waiting in the finals for him if he somehow gets past a this donkey Boston smack. <laughs> like Kevin Love hurt. No other human on that team. Like you, you literally relying on J.R. Smith and Corver for trees. Yeah, like that. And you, you, Jeff Green once in a while. <laughs> yeah, Je- what's crazy is Jeff Green looked like the best player in the NBA in games. Was it six the other night? I think that, it was. That's been his career. <laughs> Yo, I mean, but he got like a half a heart though, right? Yeah, yeah. Like he was almost out the league. Mm-hmm. So I give Jeff Green a pass. The rest of you bitch ass niggas got to get it the fuck together. Yeah, J.R. is terrible. I mean, me and Taylor was talking about before you got here. Like for the Cavs to be right back in the same position. After losing Kyrie, Kyrie was their number one scorer last year. Yes. Like, y'all essentially traded Kyrie for some bench niggas. Like, Rodney Hood straight up be DMP most nights. Yeah. Like, for y'all to lose y'all number one scorer to that and Brian had y'all right back in the same position. But the thing is, the Celtics lost Kyrie and Gordon Hayward. If they was in this series, they probably would have got these motherfuckers out of here a long time ago. Very true. <laughs> but like Kyle Hart pointed out the other day, no one has fortune like the fucking oh, yeah. Warriors. Yeah. It's just unbelievable. Everybody's hurt this time of the year. For whatever reason, Iggy is the main. Iggy either gets hurt or Draymond gets suspended at this point in the year every year. But for the most part, Steph, Clay, and Durant are always healthy. Even they played the Pelicans second round to Marcus out. Like, you know, Chris Paul goes down the other day, and they're like, Chris Paul playing in game seven might be a liability. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's just super duper fortune. Y'all played the Warriors, I mean, the Cavs in 15 in the finals. 
Love was injured and Kyrie got hurt the first game. Yeah. Remember, Bron, they was up 2 1. Yeah. <laughs> and no Kyrie, no Love. Y'all win the series. But it's LeBron and Della of Del Vadova. Della fucking Dadova. Delly. Yeah. <laughs> Della Vadova. That was it. The most that, annoying man in the league. That was when Tristan Thompson, like, like I'm gonna get 80 <laughs> off of this shit. <laughs> off of this shit. Like, yeah. <laughs> but uh enough with that. We'll get back to the to the Cavs. You figure the game's still going on. Uh you wanna get into the big uh nigga hey, news issue hey, of the week? Hey, hey. So the internets, <laughs> the streets, the barbershops, the 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 back of the bus when they sneak on. <laughs> Is is everybody is going crazy off of absolutely Pusher T and Drake? Yep. You don't got to be a rap fan to have an opinion on this shit. People are discrediting other people's opinions. People are arguing. People are damn near fighting. You, the timeline today was just ruckus for no fucking reason. Yeah, I slept through it. Thank God. Yeah, you missed it. It, it. I heard they said my man Black was catfish. Yeah, and I, I didn't understand. That's weird. You know why? And and, and I'm a, I'm gonna put this. Up. I know his mother. Like, <laughs> Yo, this listen. how fucking weird y'all is. I tweeted like, it. And I'm like, Black done bought three TRPE shirts. Yes. Do you know? And and where? And Love was like, and, and he wears them. Of, in them. <laughs> I'm like, do you know the extent that somebody has to go to to buy your shit? Go to the person that they use as catfish. <laughs> like, put the shit on. So I can take a picture. Of you. <laughs> like, you gonna wear this shirt, man? <laughs> you know what I'm saying you don't know what this is, but you gonna wear this shirt, random nigga. Yeah. From uh, Levittown yeah. You gonna put this motherfucker Yeah I know his mother His mom is sec- Works security Part time at Vandy Like I know his, his family So like No Black is not catfish He's a real human being He supports the show And I talk to him Like every day <laughs> So it was like Black I don't know where man, I, fuck I don't know where That started from Like but yeah that That's like super weird Like The way That the, the uh, internet Works now Is like People have their nucleus of not people who they fuck with, but people that they look up to. Yes. And if the people that they look up to don't necessarily know you, then you like, they like, oh, you a nobody. Whole time, we all just fucking regular for real. Yeah, exactly. But it's like, it's like almost like a hierarchy in the city. If that makes any sense, yeah, I'm not talking about there is because I don't, I don't yeah, yeah, fuck yeah, all yeah. y'all for real, for real. Yeah, but I'm talking about the way pe- what shit all of what you. people look up to and what people aspire to, and they look at them like that's the cool kids, that's who I want to be if I can ever get out of this back room, and you know what I'm saying? That's where I want to <laughs> live my life. So if you're not one of them, you're like. Who is you? Yeah. That's the way they act. Whole time you got like a nice little life. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's funny because one of my homies, he, he down south. Beautiful big house. He sent me the picture. He just bought a Z06 the other day. Brand new Z06. Retarded junk. Yeah. And that like he he hit me on the gram. And he's got 17 followers. And he he saw my Instagram and was like, man, you're, you're like super popular. Da, 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 da. I'm like, I traded all for the Z06. In a second. <laughs> he rings like me. Like right now. I give you the passwords to all this shit. <laughs> I give you the passwords to me and Chad shit and we'll take shifts in the Z06. <laughs> you, you, take, you take early straight. I'll come relieve you at 2 o'clock and we straight. But I thought about that. Like, he a nobody yeah. to whoever's a mover and a shaker or whoever you look up to. But in reality, he got it going the fuck all the way on yeah absolutely but that's really how silly we are here to that's one of the owners here uh, I, th- I thought it was a Russian <laughs> hitman I thought it was the, it was the feds <laughs> the, 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 Kremlin, the Kremlin is here <laughs> Yo, being a seven foot MMA being, fighter being black is so decent you wanna know how cause had that been a black man we'd have been like what's up boy right. but it's a white dude we all froze like what the like, fuck is oh, going man, the, 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 like, audit, the auditors are here we act the way white folks act when they see strange black people we both froze like what the fuck is going I was gonna say I just only saw fear in your eyes right now <laughs> <laughs> Yo, uh, it could have been four black dudes with hoods. We'd have been way on something. What's up, boy? <laughs> about to shoot yeah. this shit up. All right, cool. Let me get my water and get out of here. Have at it. Random white dude walk past everybody like, Yo, what the fuck is, <laughs> the fuck is going on? <laughs> We both froze. Another classic TRP <laughs> moment. That was hilarious. <laughs> oh, shit. All right, it's been a good show. I'm ready to go. <laughs> I'm ready to get the fuck out of here. Yo, is he still back there? 
He, he didn't hear any of that. <laughs> Caucasian man just meandering around. <laughs> Crazy. Oh, shit. What, what were we talking about? We're talking about the Z06. Oh, and, yeah, yeah. Like, lit in real. <laughs> that, that shit is. <laughs> I thought he didn't hear any of this. What's going on here? Yeah, but that shit is, is crazy, though. Like, I, I look at just how things work and how things operate and what people, you know, like. I, the it, shit that people look up to, the false idols that people look up to is just bullshit. I said it. Three years ago, I'm like Philly, y'all, y'all really got picks. And I remember you tried to argue me down. I'm like, no, man, I'm telling you. And I like, I thought maybe you were saying that I was saying you did, or like love. Like I, I know us, like our little circle of people we interact with. It's only like seven of us left that have sense. But like for the most part, these motherfuckers got picks. I seen them pick who they wanna back and pick who they want to yeah. look up and pick who they want to be like oh no that's cool to like no that's nut shit don't give a fuck how many followers they got or how much you like that person they on some nut shit yeah. but y'all wouldn't say that to them but on some flip side if somebody else did that you like yo that bitch corny da, da, da. and it's like yo no nah, but those be the picks yeah that's what it is i'm just tired of like all these meathead heifers like in general that's like Sparking shit and starting trouble on Duh. all these social networks. Do, do you know how much meathead shit I saw today? I told Bull Straight was like, if you ask me, push a T one shit, he got a free hundred K out of Drake. And motherfuckers was like, What? He like, yeah, Drake sent him a hundred racks. What was that for? Like, nigga, that was a That's a invoice. bill, nigga. <laughs> like what? That's a that's accounts receivable, motherfucker. Here here goes some more dumb nigga shit I saw. Chick on We both follow her She on Instagram She she got like Little things going on Businesses or whatever Yeah She's Apparently this is The new nigga scam With Cash App Motherfuckers will p- Pay for your service Or for your product Pay you via Cash App And then dispute the charges Once they have your things Or whatever Right And she made a post about it Like I'm not doing Cash App anymore Just strictly cash Because I got You know Yeah because Cash App Will just take the money And then make you prove That it's legitimate Exactly So a nigger Comments on her post And says When they pay you Just take the cash out instantly They can't get it back I'm like This is how you know You niggas (laughs) is in check systems And don't have any Banking institutions Like what nigga (laughs) Like Like It don't work like that Like you take the money out And it's not there When they come to get it back now it's you're gonna just, be a negative. Now you just over, you just overdrafted. Overdra- yeah. <laughs> like now you uh, overdrafted your cash. I'm yet. like y'all really in check systems, yo. Y'all can't open accounts. Like how the fuck is that your logic? But uh, the shit is crazy, yo. Bruh. It's insane. Some of the things and some of the beliefs I said earlier. I'm like it's mind boggling because it's people that listen to y'all. Yeah. No matter how dumb it's the people tw- that listen to y'all, y'all probably have kids. Y'all res- that means y'all responsible for people and it's bitches who fuck y'all. I said and, it and, best and, earlier. And, and, and the guy and the ladies, it's niggas who eat y'all pussy and y'all are fucking nitwits. I swear to God, yo. And not we can get back to this push drink shit. Dude gets on the bus, right? <laughs> swear to God, North Philly. Matt up the corner. Yo, set the chronicles. <laughs> Nigga gets on the bus. He like, yeah, she got me. He goes to the back. I'm talking about st- Steam <laughs> straight to the back. She step up. She show a red, white, and blue card. I'm like, you can't even use those no more. Like they they got rid of them. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I'm like, yeah, you can't use those. She like, so what I gotta do? I'm like, I mean, you on her now. It's like if you disable, you just gotta pay a disabled fare. It's one twenty five. Yeah. I'm like, you paying for him though? She like, I mean. <sighs> And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I, clearly, I guess that's a no. I clearly, I'm like, well, I'm like, if you paying for both of you, I'm like, both of y'all at a disabled fair is one two fifty. So you basically paying one fair and y'all both. I'm like, it's two fifty. She was like, before I could say, I'm about to just be like, go ahead, I don't care. <laughs> before I could say anything, she like, babe, he said I gotta pay two fifty. He in the back. He like what? She like, I, he said it's two fifty. He like, man, man. Oh, open the back door. Come on, we get no, we're gonna wait for the next one. And he got off the back door and she walked down the front door and went and met him. I'm just looking at her like, bitch, you lost in the sauce. <laughs> like, how you following this stupid ass shit? But they follow that stupid ass shit. Yeah. Like, and I'm sitting there like just I'm vexed. Like, <laughs> what the fuck just happened? <laughs> like, I was gonna let your poor asses go. He's like, man, let, let us all. We get on the next jump. Because and she went following behind him. Because 
what's the what's the strategy called? Niggas do. Oh, here's what niggas do. Niggas do avoidance until c- confrontation. Yeah. But then when they're confronted, they don't even know how to handle the confrontation because they know they just totally on some bullshit and don't have a defense. Exactly. So then it's just like, man, I'm out of here. Yeah. You want some nut shit? I'm out of here. I told motherfuckers the dopest shit I seen in a while from like. This generation was me coming out and saying, yeah, I shouldn't have done that shit with Drake. I was high. I was fucking with Perks, fucking with Deline. I don't fuck with that shit no more. That shit was no reason for that shit to happen. You a man. You made a mistake. Yeah. Own up to this shit and go ahead about you. Like, this this weird ass generation, like, motherfuckers can't apologize. They can't take no account. Like, Carl always talks about accountability. That shit is huge. Yeah. No one wants to take any accountability for it. Any yep. fucking None whatsoever. Thing. And then we get people out here doing this dumb ass shit. But... Enough of that. Let's get back to the reason. Why. So the talk of all the barbershops and beauty salons, Pusha T and Drake has finally come to a head. Uh, this is basically only took fourteen years. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this has been going on at minimum since like twenty eleven or some shit like that. Oh, no, oh six. You figure Mister Me Too and all that shit. Like, well, yeah, that's if you include the the, the Wayne part in it, then yeah, this goes back to like two thousand and six to now. So you're talking about twelve years. I, mean, I, I had that Vibe magazine when Wayne was on the cover in the Bape shit. Yeah, and then they did the Mister Me Too had the fake Wayne in the video and all that shit. Like, and then yeah. said, "Oh no, we ain't talking about Wayne." Oh no, that's not true, <laughs> nigga. <laughs> nigga, what? What? My eyes work. What are you talking about? Yeah. I can I can see you, bitch. Like, what are you talking about? So basically, this has been like a passive aggressive beef that's been going on for. Uh, over a decade now uh, You know A crescendo moment of it Was when Lil Wayne uh, Said Man fuck the clips Who the fuck is the clips These dumbass niggas I'm riding state to state In a $200,000 bus Picking up $100,000 Every day These niggas is poor And they fucking corny Fuck them niggas So that was a crescendo moment Early in the beef And then uh, You had the disses On the Re-Up Gang mixtapes That was when he did The, uh, the Exodus All that This was before that what do you have before that? Uh, on what the fuck it was? I forget what beat they was rapping to, but Pusha had a verse where he was like, uh, "Don't make me come to Miami and bury Wayne." Yeah, uh, hu- you absolutely they right. They call me Hurricane, nigga. A hurricane. Don't make me come to Miami and bury Wayne. Yeah. Like so, they've been they was dead at each other. Like, and then Lil Wayne had the Twitter moment. Fuck Pusha T and anybody that was that after Exodus. Him. That was after yeah, Exodus or whatever that. like that. So it's been a whole bunch of shit going on, and essentially. It's not about anything. No. Like at the at the core of it all, it's not about anything because the clips worked directly with Birdman and Lil Wayne. Um Lil Wayne was on a grinding remix. The clips were on what happened to that boy. Uh Pharrell has done a zillion songs with Lil Wayne over the years. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Kanye looks up to Wayne and, and fucking worships Wayne and thinks he's one of the fucking gods of hip hop. Uh, and there's a, a mutual admiration from Wayne to Kanye. They have a very good relationship. And then Kanye and Drake have have their own on again, off again, working relationship, jealous bullshit, mm-hmm. get in the midst of all of that shit. Just a year ago, they was putting, a year and a half ago, they was putting up billboards, talking about uh, Dubai and Calabasas, they was putting the album out together, mm-hmm. and then Kanye went and did that fucking rant at the concert and fucked it all up. So it's just been a whole bunch of stuff that's been going on in all of it, and Pusha has been throwing his shots here, there, and, you know, the other about Wayne Baby and Drake in particular. And last year, Drake finally said something on Two Birds, One Stone, and then Pusha said nothing because he said, that nigga ain't talking about me. Everybody know I did X, Y, Z, and if I ain't do it, then no rapper did it and blah, blah, blah. Two then, Birds and One Stone was really good. Yes, but then he came back in, in the Angie Martinez interview and said the exact reason why I responded is because of what Drake said. Uh, infrared is because of what Drake said on Two Birds. Yeah. So it didn't benefit you to say anything then, but it benefits you now because you put an album out. So now you want to stir the pot again and say something about this ball. Well, you finally got what you've been asking for for all of these years. And he flamed your dumb ass along with your boss. And now y'all both look crazy. And it's been radio silence from y'all side for 48, 72 hours. Well, I, it, like I said it maybe like right after. What year did uh, If You're Reading This Is Too Late come out? 2015. I really like that album. Remember that album? album? That album was like a sneak attack, Jones. It literally came out like middle of the night, like mm-hmm. no promotion. 
When I got done listening to 6 p.m. in New York, that was the last joint on there. Yeah. I said, I remember tweeting it. Rapping Drake is better than all these niggas. Yeah. And motherfuckers like argued me, you're bugging the fuck the fuck out of here. I'm like, I'm not talking about Blem Drake. I'm not talking about uh Controller drink. Controller or motherfucking uh, dance. work drink. <laughs> I, rapping drink. Like when that nigga just go, like there's no hook. He's yeah. just straight rapping. Drake better than a lot of niggas, yo. And he proved it time and time again. Yes. Like, I real talk, like, I'm not even shocked at this point. I'm, I'm, and, and my thing is like, they can't catch him. Like we're not talking about him rapping and putting away you know, no diss, but like chingies and fucking bow wows. Like he's really like he's he's cleaning up rap like the streetest rapist yeah. niggas. He cleaned common up. He cleaned meek up. <laughs> Putting them away. Yeah. Like it's like, a we lot. We haven't heard. We really haven't heard from common sense. It's a lot of motherfuckers out there that will be like, "Oh, Pusha T lyrically is better than him. Lyrically better than a lot of motherfuckers." Yeah. Drake still put him away. Like, you can't take that away. You just can't. Yeah. He put him over there. And it's like, Drake's so huge in the rap arena, in the music arena, that a lot of motherfuckers ain't even worried about what pushed. Like, because you you sparked it in the eyes of many. Yeah. Because Drake wasn't worried about you. I, I, were you worried about the Drake push her teeth before Monday? No. That's what I mean. No. So well, it's like, it, was in, it was not in nobody's head. So it's like when Daytona dropped on fucking, what was it, Thursday, Friday? Wednesday and the Thursday. Wednesday and the Thursday. You awoke something that wasn't really going on. <laughs> yeah. Like, you re-sparked it. No one was thinking about this yeah. shit. And it's like, you know, your album drops and then this man turns around and in hours on, it, it's just so petty that it's like, that it's your release day. Yeah. Like, all right, cool. To the point where at the end of the night, no one's even talking about your album or how good, like, this, it is good. It's a great album. Daytona's real good. I, I listened to it on the way over here. Santorini. I it, love that know, beat you know. on uh, Santorini. It, 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 that shit is, is just, it's not Santorini. Santorini. It's San, Santorini. Yeah, it's like, I'm Santorini. Rick Ross. Yeah, but Santorini. yeah, Santorini, like, that beat is just yeah. so dark and so decent. Like, Kanye's production is still Kanye's production. Absolutely. Can't ever shit on that. <laughs> Me, I'm not the biggest Pusher fan. Me, personally, when they were the clips, I like Malice <coughs> way more than I like Pusher. Yeah. As time went on, Pusher has done, remember, New God Flow and all that. I liked all of that shit. Yeah. So, remember, we were the pain gang. That shit straight came from Pusher and Future. Right. A lot of people don't know that. There's some history for you. <laughs> I don't never feel pain. Remember that? Yeah. that well, that's where that shit came from. We, I, I'm, I'm not a over the top pusher fan but yeah. I like him and I respect him as a good rapper and shit yeah. I loved Clips work you know what I'm saying I told you I was a real big Malice fan it, it, at this point though it's just like you poking the bear for what yeah my, my thing is the issue with him and Drake is an even faker issue than the one with him and Wayne Yeah, the him and Wayne shit is more so like Wayne blatantly disrespected them guys in the media when he was at the height of being Little Wayne. Yeah. So that's like a vendetta type of thing. And let's not forget about this. Wayne was fucking on Lauren London and had a baby by her and she was calling herself Pusha's sister and all yeah. of that shit. So I'm sure that has some motivation behind the shit that's going on when then Khalif says, I told Young Stunner he should switch the bait. Like, because it's like basically like little lines being drawn. Like, no, we fuck with Wayne more than we fuck with you. And it's almost like, man, fuck that nigga. Like, I'm the nigga. And it's yeah. like some, some like, almost like some 80s era, like hip hop bravado. Like, man, that nigga ain't the nigga. I'm the nigga because I'm XYZ. And I'm going to put this, I'm going to diss this nigga every chance that I get. Like, it's on some, like, how, like, a lot of people don't know Jay Z and LL. That's like how that shit was. Like, Jay Z terrorized LL for years. He followed him around everywhere he was going to be at. Battle me, nigga. Tonight's the night, nigga. You gonna battle me again. And if you book somewhere tomorrow, you gonna battle me again. Like, and he just, but we didn't have social media then. And 
they weren't releasing records. It was just like some rap shit or whatever, mm-hmm. but it went on for years. So by the time you fast forward to Jay-Z being president of Def Jam, first thing LL says, man, fuck this nigga. Like, I'm not, f- I'm not doing nothing for this yeah. nigga or with this nigga. Fuck him. So it's like, it's some competitive shit. So I know Push is viewing it like on a competitive angle, but when you drag a beef on for too long, you start to look bitter and jealous. And desperate. Because, and desperate because these guys aren't paying you no mind. And the biggest problem... And I love Pusha and I love the clips. I got exclusive audio footage on a fucking CD that I burned from either Napster or LimeWire. That's the album that didn't even come out. They had the funeral on it. Like, I met these guys in 1998 on the corner of 55th and Woodland with Pharrell Williams at Philly's Most Wanted Suckers video shoot. Like, I have extensive history with knowing them and that group and all that shit. And I know Ab Lava and I've talked to him several times and put business deals and shit together for them and all that. So I'm very familiar with that camp with that being said Pusha has to stop this whole narrative with Wayne like Wayne ain't getting no money and that Wayne is not rich as fuck and a legend because you look and sound crazy yeah to people with sense because last time I checked Lil Wayne was worth 150 million dollars Lil Wayne's walking around and a nigga owe him probably 100 m's and he still got 100 m's it ain't too many people that can say that Little Wayne was on the <laughs> Forbes list last year. Little Wayne's on the Forbes list every year. Just saying. With with his business being totally twisted, he's so much of a money maker and a and a bread generator that he still makes 15, 17, 18 million. Like a year. I don't understand the money pokes at YM. It doesn't make It doesn't sense. it doesn't add up. Because if you look at the Forbes top 15 last year, the whole YM was all on there. They're, they're with, all all, with whatever issues they got with Burr, like coming out and being like, oh, you're in this deal and you got a 360 or whatever the fuck motherfuckers want to say. Remember, yeah. that was like Pusher's John. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You signed to one nigga who signed, signed to another, another nigga. nigga who signed to a third nigga. Now that's bad luck. Everybody's on the Forbes list, so we doing something <laughs> to fuck right yeah. over here. The splits are right. Some Somewhere down the line, the splits is getting split up. Birdman got a red Bugatti. <laughs> Bur- 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 Weezy got a black one and Drake got a black one. They doing something. Nikki got pink Lambos, do whatever the fuck she want. Yeah. They doing something right. So it's, it's like, like the, the money part of the conversation, it just never struck me as like a, a valid issue. And he always went to it because there was another verse where he was like, uh, keep inflate. It's about, uh, I'm the same nigga make a G off a key. Uh, you think that small chains, they never send less than 50. So, uh, so tell me, uh, uh, factor in the fact that they going by day three. So tell me what an eighty grand verse mean to me. Like comparing selling coke to selling music, when even somebody like Ar Ab just did a fucking uh, just just did an interview the other day where he was like, "Yo, if a nigga is hustling, even if you make a lot of money hustling, that don't mean that that's your net." He said, you got to you gotta factor in your net. He said, so even if you selling Coke and you got a popping block and you netting four or five, eight thousand dollars a week, I could, he said, I sat down one day and did features and made 17,000 doing features. And I ain't got to look over my shoulder or worry about nobody kicking my door in to come lock me the fuck up for doing these. He said, to, for doing these verses. So you should never compare drug money to rap money. Well, here's the thing with rap, rap drug money. Everybody did what Escobar did. You know what I mean? Yeah. Jay-Z always talks at nauseam about how much money he was getting. Rick Ross, all of them. And it's like, no. Like, y'all y'all chains, cars, homes, all this shit came once y'all became rappers. Right. You know what I'm saying? It, it's it, Yes, I believe rappers have sold drugs. Yes, I believe Pusher T, Jeezy, I believe. Yo Gotti. Yo Gotti. I, like, yes, I believe this shit. Yeah. But your extensive paper, all these chains and hundred thousand dollar watches Came from and all, music. This shit is from rap. Yeah. It's from you doing features, getting show yeah. money, all that shit. You can't show like even if you make an extraordinary amounts of money on the street. And let's talk about Big Meech is the best that ever do it as far as a black drug dealer goes. Is you have a time limit associated with that shit. You go to jail. For 30 years. That's what Meech got. Mm -hmm. And that was a blessing. He took the 30 with pride. He took the 30 off of circumstantial evidence. Like, yeah, give me the 30 because I I, I don't exhaust my appeals. If they give me life, it's no, I I can't appeal it. I'm just toast. They give me life with no chance of parole. I can't appeal the shit. I'm in here for life. Give me the 30. He took the 30 with a smile. And he halfway through the shit now. Isn't that crazy? Like that's how that's how fat. So yeah, because he went down in oh oh five. I was gonna say oh seven. 
Wasn't even that. It was 05. That's the case, yeah. Man. He bought 15 in on his sentence between the time served and all of that shit. So it's like, yo, none of y'all did what he did. So he's the only one that could talk that money shit to a rich rapper. Yeah. The only one. They said he, he said he pulled his Maybach up on the side of Jay Z and blocked him in and blocked him in <laughs> just so Jay would have to come like and holler at yo him. could you move your Maybach yeah. <laughs> like oh yeah I, I'm moving so you can get your Maybach, yeah. <laughs> Maybach out yeah. like Meech had million dollar watches from Jacob and shit like that yeah. like unreal shit seven billboards in Atlanta yeah. on fucking Smack DVD with the fucking mayor of South Beach and like shit like that like he did it bigger than any of you niggas and it took. A crew of 500 niggas to get it done. So if it's a crew of 80, y'all, yeah. you trying to tell me that you generating the same money as a nigga that had the 77 hottest songs of 2007? Stop it. Yeah. It's not possible. I just think it's funny that we <laughs> live in a world now where Drake can like come at some, like Drake, who's like a Canadian actor, like wheelchair Jimmy. Yeah, can like. Come out and be like, man, you ain't sell all them drugs. Cut it the fuck out. He <laughs> <laughs> just come out and say that. And it's just like, yeah. And my thing is, like, for Drake to be soft, nobody can get him. Nobody. Nobody. Niggas can't throw a rock at him. Can't get him. Puff got him. Puff the only one. That's it. And that's what And the, since then, fucking military level security. Like, you can't get him. And they've been running around beating rappers up for the last two years, from what I understand. Yeah. 600 Breezy was like, yo, I was with Drake at Coachella. Niggas was getting punched in the face left and right and wasn't doing shit about it. He said niggas was getting mashed on. This is this a kid from Chicago from a, from a neighborhood where niggas get murdered at. And he like, yo, I don't know where people got that idea from. Them niggas around Drake is real niggas. Like Baca and, oh, and, and, when, and Chubbs and all of these. When Baca <laughs> might declare it a holiday, as soon as Baca get back on the road, he knew. Like, like So it, it's, it's just like, yo, for him to be the so-called the solvest nigga in the game, nobody can touch him. And then when it come to getting on tracks, I, I, they can't, you can't touch him near neither. I ain't seen it yet. <laughs> so I don't know. I, I, and it's fucked up that it's like now we have to talk about Pusher vs. Drake because Pusher released a real good project and that's I love it and I'm still listening to it and don't get it misconstrued it's just certain points in Pusher's argument that I just disagree with like from a strategy standpoint it's just like yo number one you poked a bear you woke up a nigga that wasn't even thinking about you no more like the shit was really over and you know you had your opportunity like on some hip hop shit to address it right when it happened. When two birds, one stone happened, you had an opportunity to like kick it off because it was obvious that he finally was like, all right, I'm tired of this shit. I'm going to finally like say something to this nigga. But you took the quote unquote high road and said, man, that nigga ain't talking to me, blah, blah, blah. But then you come back when it's album time and say the exact reason why I responded is because of what he said on two birds and one stone. Like, So it was like the rapper politics part of it be like confusing me sometimes. Like how niggas be trying to play the game. I, the, the the dopest line I took away from the Duppy freestyle was when Drake said, "Don't fuck with me when I'm in album mode." I was just like, I felt that, you know <laughs> what I mean? Because it it literally was like, like that. Like, yeah. all right, turn the beat on real quick. Yeah, <sighs> that John at the beginning <laughs> he like, sounded so disgusted and so like bothered. Like y'all again. Like, and the whole thing was. I had just got finished saying to somebody a few days before, like, the only way that Drake can really fully address this is if he blows up Kanye West in the in the process. He blew Kanye West. The, like, Kanye really got it worse than Pusha did. Yeah. I popped Styles for 30 hours and let him repeat. Yeah. Father had to stretch his hands out and get it from me. Yeah. Like, that shit is, that's that shit that make niggas look in the mirror. Like, damn, like, am I, am I yeah. what I say I am? Am I really the greatest artist of this generation? Yeah. Maybe not. That joint was ugly. <laughs> Quentin caught a stray. Yeah. He was working at Kroger, double shifts. I was trying to help the boy. Quentin tweeted. He Quentin said, like, what the he f- said it was Publix, nigga. It was Publix, actually. <laughs> Publix, bitch. <laughs> yeah. he, what was the deal? He said, uh, your brother said it was your cousin, then, then him, then, then you. you. So you, you ain't rapping what you, you did. You just rap what you knew. knew. Don't get mad. It's a lot of, don't, be, don't feel sorry. It's a lot of rappers who do what you do. It's no malice in your heart. You an approachable dude. dude. I'm and, and, and somebody, people kept asking me. <laughs> I, I said on Twitter, I said, um, "That was a double entendre. That was just it was a trip. It was triple. It, it, it was a, it was triple because." Oh, for, real quick, uh, nigga tweeting on and a nigger tweeting on <laughs> on that whole 
uh, Drake Pusher T shit the yeah. other day. He said it was so many double entendres in there. He spelt it double aunt Andres. <laughs> like he wrote double, double aunt Andres. Aunt Andre, like he tried to spell entendres and spelled it Aunt Andre. <laughs> I was just like, my God. Try, I mean. try again. Uh, try, try again, uh, Tafik. Yeah, my God. So, I so, so I said on Twitter, I said, yo, I said, you know, if y'all think that that Drake, because a lot of niggas was trying to discredit it. Oh, yeah. It was, it was a lot of that. A lot, of, a lot of, a lot of ass hurt pusher fans or whatever. And it was like, I was like, yo, if you think that Drake, this was light, take the degree of difficulty in weaving something. With all them double, triple meanings in it in 24 hours. I said, he was just throwing doubles and triples at niggas like it was nothing. Somebody's like, well, what's the triple entendre? Number one, the no malice shit is a triple entendre because just straightforward saying it's no malice in your heart. You you soft. Like, you're you're a pussy. Number two, your brother's name now is no, is no malice. Number three, in your own rap, you said uh, out of two clips, they say malice the meanest. So it's like your own words are being used against you. In this argument, so that's that that's just the one off top, like the whole no malice shit, and it's just like yo, the nigga is amazing, man. Like, and it just it comes out so effortlessly, and he was throwing shit that the the way he was throwing this shit at him, it just really got motherfuckers off balance and just saying anything. This nigga Gilly, who I respect a lot, Gilly went on his live and said that Drake didn't say nothing hot to push it to. Yeah, no, nah, that was bullshit. He said the only thing he said that was hot was you running behind a nigga that's older than you. That's the only thing that he said that was hot to push it to. I said, well, what fucking record did you hear? Does that, did you hear it when he said that and then it cut yeah. off? Like, that's the only way a rapper could say some shit like that. Either that or you just not sophisticated enough to catch all of the shit that he's throwing at motherfuckers. Yeah, like, it, it was crazy. The, um, <clears throat> you know... What was the Joni said? Uh, I had a microphone of yours, but the signature faded. faded. Like that line was crazy. Yeah. Like, like Drake just. That's kind of kind of indicative of the way things been happening lately. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like it was good. The father stretch my hands line was another one that was I just was like, like I was like, damn Kanye, he probably didn't think this through. Yeah. Like. And I mean, and Drake is well within his right to bash Kanye because at the end of the day, you're the CEO of that label. So, and, and you executive produced this album. You you produced every song on here, and you rapped on this album. So you know everything that's being created and everything that's you know being done. And you're basically allowing your employee to diss me for revenue. Yeah. So I'm gonna just blow the whole shit up on all of y'all, and now you got to deal with it too. Yeah. So now going into your album cycle, we still talking about how I diss you. Yeah. Tell Ye we got an invoice coming for you. Seeing how we just sold another 20 for you. Yeah, like, and the yeah. projections is about 80,000 uh, for the sale. So he might have sold extra 40 for him. Because with streaming and all that, with the album only being seven songs, you, he was probably going to sell somewhere between 35 and 40. And this shit, instant, this beef. Shh. Crazy man, you gonna fuck around and debut at uh, in the top five because of this shit. with a seven song <laughs> with a seven song album. It's real. Thanks, Drake. Yeah, appreciate the stimulus it. Stimulus package is real. Yeah, when Drake posted the uh, the invoice, man, what looking at the comments <laughs> like, like it was like just looking at the level of blue checks that was in there. It's like Drake really got like he got it like every Snoop Dogg, Lil Duval. Uh, academics made two videos about the shit. Like all these, all these affluent people that really move, like are involved in like music culture and popular culture. Period. Like are taking their time to make reaction videos in the in the comment and shit like that on what he's like. That doesn't happen. Like yeah. that did, when when push put infrared out, that didn't happen. A few people said stuff about it, but it wasn't like, oh, we making it's all these reaction videos and all that shit. There's whole playlists on YouTube right now that are different accounts that uploaded the Duppy freestyle. Yeah, it's ten. It's just ten Duppy freestyles, and that's the whole playlist from <laughs> uploaded from different accounts. Seems obvious. Kanye's just grabbing headlines, like with the cover of the album oh, yeah. being the Whitney Houston. Yeah, uh, I, I still don't understand that. That was trashy. Yeah, I, I still don't understand like, that one. Like what? Like that Wednesday before it came out? So like 24, 24 hours before it comes out? Like, yeah. Yeah. They just doing... A, they just... I don't know, man. 
it was a bad move. And I basically said, push ahead eight hours to respond. We on like hour uh, 40 something now. So I'm interested in the response. But my whole thing is this. Somebody asked me, they said, yo, can, does Pusha have to respond? And should he? I said, he doesn't have to respond because, you know, he. this is not a new issue. But if he does, he has to say something new other than Quentin Miller wrote your records because that's been the most explosive thing that anybody dropped on Drake thus far in his career. And he fully unpacked that on this record. And Meek tried to use that and it didn't work because people was like, oh, man, shut up. <laughs> oh, man, shut up. I seen somebody tweet today because Nikki came out and tweeted yeah, like, yeah. when the fuck is we going to be done with the Quentin Miller shit? Like, it, you need your mic turned up? No, I'm good. Oh, just the chorus. That's all. Yeah. Like when the fuck is we going to be done with the Quentin Miller shit? Like it's it's just old at this point. It's just yeah. like it's not good. Like it's just it's just stupid. Every person. I know I know this is going to fuck your minds up. Think of whoever your favorite rapper is. They've had someone write for him. Every single one it's of them. It's just the way it go. There ain't there's no one out there you can go look at their their like lyric Liner joint notes. Yeah. and it it don't have more than one name in yeah. right written by a section. It's just not it's not happening. Yeah. Now, producers do get writing credit also, but when you start seeing 5 6 8 motherfuckers with credits on a song and it's not no sample in it that's those are real writing credits. that's writing it's not production like i i love snoop <laughs> forever because everybody who's anybody in music knows snoop's pen is in fucking credible snoop is one of the best rappers to ever come along snoop said out his own mouth when i heard what jay wrote for dre i said whoo what jay got for me right <laughs> like, and, and snoop one of the greatest rappers ever yeah DLC wrote large chunks of Doggy Style. It's just the way it go. Snoop had an album called Ego Trippin' where he let all his favorite young niggas write all his songs for the whole album. And, and named and, it and Ego Trippin'. Ego Trippin' because I'm feeling myself so much, I'm going to let my young niggas write some shit for me and I'm going to just get on here and just and just bust the coldest shit that they that they. A wrote. lot of motherfuckers probably didn't even know that's why that <laughs> shit was called Ego Trippin'. Real shit. Like your favorite rappers have wrote for people and had shit written wrote for them. them. Yes, absolutely. It's just the way it go. People forget the fact that... Chris wrote songs for Beans. Yes. Yes. He wrote for Beans. So did Oskino. But Beans, <laughs> on the flip side, wrote for people. Beans said out his own mouth. It's hard for me to write for other motherfuckers because it's like I'm going in talking about juice, perks, and shooting cops. <laughs> and it's like I'm writing for a nigga that ain't never done this shit. <laughs> like, it's real. Everybody has written for other people. T.I. If I tried to explain to my homie the other day, he wouldn't believe me. I'm like, yo, T.I. wrote Fresh as I Miss by Bow Wow. Yeah. He was like, yo, the fuck he, he did? He wrote I'm a like, gang of shit for Bow Wow. the fuck he did? Yeah, he wrote a gang. If you listen... You he ain't wrote, ride, you wrote, ain't ride, you ain't bumping like I'm wrote, bumping. That uh, sound like T.I. That was the same time 24s was out. Yeah. He wrote, uh, what was the other song? Let's Get Down, the joint that Bob yeah. had with Birdman. He wrote half that album. Oh, it's just the way <laughs> it go. Rappers write. That's what they do. They're yeah. writers. You get paid to write. Yo, write this for me. Yeah. Nas wrote Getting Jiggy With It. Yes. Yes. I know that blow your mind. And yes. fucking Stickman from Dead Prez wrote, and Jay Electronica <laughs> wrote the nigger album for Nas. Yeah. <laughs> like it's different levels of, of ghost. It's, it's like it's collaboration. I see motherfuckers this week playing Rom Fest. Let me tell you this: if Rom Fest and GLC didn't exist, and consequence, we might not have got College Dropout. Yeah, that's. I'm fact. sorry, Rom Fest dead ass was writing on College Dropout. Yeah, and if we, and if Saha didn't exist, we might not have got the last five Kanye albums. How about it? My beautiful dark twisted fantasy. Saha got like twelve writing credits on that album. You, Jesus, he write, his writing credit all over. I that. think Tra that's the weirdest shit. Travis that rappers Scott, have Tra come out now like, oh, he got writers, nigga. You boss. You Everybody got <laughs> like what? There's a rumor that Lupe wrote uh, a lore for Jay Z. I've heard that a couple times, but I, I don't. I mean, I, I don't know if it's true or not, so I can't really. I've heard it though. Yeah. My thing is this: if a rapper comes in the game and doesn't evolve. That nigga doesn't have writers. Here's the thing. It's different. I'm going to explain two things. Number one, it's different levels of writing for somebody. Yeah. It's contribution, which is me and Matt in the studio, and we working. he he working on a song. I might not even rap, but I might be like, yo, when you said such, 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 said the bitch got a fat ass, say her ass so big it looked like such, 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 such. That's 
me contributing to what you already created right. and me helping you to fine tune it. Then there's collaboration where we literally sit and bounce lines off of each other and I write two bars and you write <laughs> two bars and then we put and then we do that till we get 12 bars and then we put it all together and then we got a fucking finished product for a song. Then there's ghostwriting. Certain motherfuckers ghostwrite for people where the nigga not even in the studio until it's time to record. Are oh, y'all ready for me? All right, cool. Yeah. I'm about to pull up. Like, yeah. let me come record this shit. Let me see what this nigga got to say. Let me know what is ready. <laughs> let me know what this shit ready. Yeah. I got some holes at the Mondrian. But that's this type situation with still DRE. And Snoop literally, it was on documentaries, everything. Like, that moment was when I was just like, yo, this nigga Jay really good. Because, yeah. like, he came in here and did this with no problem. It's still they, Dre Day, nigga. They said 15, AK, nigga. 15 people had that beat and couldn't figure couldn't it out. Couldn't fuck with it. And Jay just came right in and fucked it around. Yeah. But that's when he was on, Jay was on Rapper Island. And that was around that volume three era and all that shit where he was just. It was 99. He was un- I'm the man. He was untouchable. Will, uh, Will, uh, what did he say? Still sold more records than Will Smith. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was Jay. Like, yeah. You know, on a, on a canopy, my stamina be enough for Pamela Anderson Lee. Like, that was when he, Jay was, he was a menace. Yeah, he, he was, was a he, he was, was a rap yeah, menace. He was untouchable. Yeah. Like, he was doing heat checks. That's around the time when the Blue Streak soundtrack and they called him. He said, "I want seven hundred fifty thousand and hung the phone up and laughed and told Irv Gotti their call back. Cause he he knew like I'm I, this shit gonna be easy too. It's gonna be the easiest seven fifty I ever made in my life. Yeah. Like Dre came through and gave uh, Rough Riders they biggest smash with the uh, well at the time they biggest smash the uh, jig. Uh, yeah. what's my mother like? He was on fire and it's like that. Like when you got the heat, you kind of putting them out there for everybody. Fifty was writing for motherfuckers Look, left 50 and right. Was writing for Puff, Jennifer Lopez, Cameron was writing for motherfuckers left and right. It's just the way Mace. it go. I don't know why that shocks people. I'm so and it, like we talk about it. The minds like y'all can't escape whatever little shit you got going on in your heads long enough to really, really just put things in perspective. Yeah. If the best rappers, if Biggie tells you, yo, I wrote hardcore and conspiracy, two albums that aren't mine that are <laughs> fucking classics. Yeah. If Snoop can come out and tell you to still DRE story, if T.I. can come out and tell you the freshest I'm in story, if Cameron can tell you, yo, I wrote touch me, tease me. How the fuck do y'all not believe <laughs> that, that all these motherfuckers have yeah. writers and write? There's a such thing now in the music industry called writers camps for the yeah, last like, five, seven years where they put the best writers and producers all in the same studio in different rooms and just see what they come up with for the purpose of one project. Yeah. Oh, Mariah Carey got an album or oh, Wiz Khalifa got an album. Like right now, Young Berg, hit maker, is responsible for like 35% of the Hot 100 on Ain't Billboard that crazy? right now. Like Young 35%. Bird. Young fucking Bird. Transformer chain snatch. Him, Young Bird. Him and, and, and his partner A1 Bentley, they're responsible for like 35% of the Hot 100 right now. I remember now. one of my favorite tweets ever was like, um, Neo and Dream write songs about each other and get Beyonce to sing them. And I was <laughs> cracking the fuck up. Like, yeah, like really, like, the the writing aspect of it, yes. Nas has he's a crazy writer. Most Def is a crazy writer. Common, Ice Cube, yeah. Like you look at Ice Cube, the fact that he wrote literally everything that came from an entire coast yeah. for like a good four or five years. The fact that Doc, being from Dallas, wrote everything that came from an entire coast after him for the right. next four or five. Years. I'd I'd really just be lost as to like you look at Easy E as a legend. But he didn't it's write shit. well known that he didn't write Nothing. music. Nothing. But it, no one but, ever be like, oh man, Easy had writers. Easy E, I've said it on this podcast 15 times. Easy E is the reason why I love hip hop music. And ain't it crazy that Ice Cube be like Easy E is the godfather of gangster rap? Yeah. And Ice Cube wrote all the shit. You do you know why? Because there's a, a there's a statement that says the performers get remembered. It's not about the process and how you get like to Cube the Cube pre- wrote Boys in the Hood. Yes. And, the back. and Cube out his own mouth forever in a day will say Easy's the godfather of gangster yeah, rap. Because if Cube puts that record out, it's not the same record. No. Cube said, I didn't even have a car. <laughs> the fuck I look like talking about cruising down the street in my 6'4? I look stupid. Yeah. Easy had a 6'4. Makes sense. Here, Easy. <coughs> you say this shit. Easy didn't even want to do it. Yeah. 
straight became the godfather of gangster rap off of that shit. Like, and that's that it's so shocking to me to see in 2018, where as the world is as complex as it is, you still got like simple minded rap fans like, oh man, he, he, he be he be getting help. And, and this is what I said the other up. day to one of my homies. He's like an avid Drake hater and shit. <laughs> avid Drake hater. <laughs> he like, man, that that Quentin Miller shit rocked Drake, man. That shit rocked this whole like. We don't, I don't even look at him the same. You can't look at him the same. And I'm like, yo, you do realize that like the Quentin Miller shit was like 2000 and like 15. Drake's biggest hits of his life have come since he since he hasn't been fucking with Quentin Miller. Right. Like Drake, five biggest songs of his life. Are all post Quentin Miller. Controller, One Dance, Work with Rihanna, God's Plan. They're all pl- past Quentin Miller. Yeah. So. Quentin Miller was really Drake dumbing his shit down and doing some like rap trap type of shit yeah. because he wanted some of that stuff in his catalog because he was a fan of it. He didn't have to do that because he does the other shit so good and so easily. That he's like, damn, I kind of need some help. I'm just kind of stuck in this pop world. Like, I kind of need some help doing these other type of records. And he heard the nigga was like, damn, let's fuck with him. Let's see what he, you know, what he got to offer. Yeah. And and my thing is this. Uh, if you look at, like, Drake, you know, who else? Jay-Z, 50 Cent, Kanye for a little minute, Wayne, T.I. Like niggas that reach a certain level. Yeah, niggas that controlled the game. Like really reached a certain level. Snoop, all, you know. They literally, in this era, the social media 24-hour news cycle, back in the day it used to be 3,000 .coms at one point. Ain't that crazy? At one point there were only 3,000 websites. Now it's 14 gazillion, you know what I mean? They literally, when they, when you reach to a certain point or ascend to a certain point, they will literally just make up shit. Yeah. Because I told my homie the other day, ain't it crazy that in when Wayne was the shit, 07, 08, 09, he dropped the Carter 2, dropped the droughts, all of the fucking, uh, the gang, the, uh, Gangsta Grills. Gangsta Grills, all of that shit. Yeah. Did all them fucking features, was smashing every fucking thing. Carter 2 did a couple million. He's the biggest nigga on earth. Then he starts the Young Money imprint. You don't know who the fuck Nicki Minaj is. You don't know who Drake is, but he does a Young Money album. That shit is successful. Then he does Carter Three and takes over the whole entire fucking galaxy. Yeah, niggas was like, "Oh, the boy Drake writing for him." Remember that? <laughs> yeah, Drake was Wayne Ghostwriter. I remember that vividly. Motherfuckers like, yeah, the boy Drake be writing for Wayne. Now, fast forward. Yeah, we done got to the point where Wayne cooled off. Wayne's a legend. He's D Wade. He's the took. He's the fucking man. Yeah, but Drake's to that point. Somebody writing right that, that shit. Somebody <laughs> writing that shit. Man. I know somebody writing that shit. He ain't writing that shit. And then, yeah, the same and, reason that make him love you or ultimately make him hate you in the end. LeBron comes out. He not better than Kobe. He he not even better than Dwight Howard. Year fifteen, LeBron here. All them niggas done faded. He's the fucking man. That nigga on HGH <laughs> on steroids. I know it. Like, ain't that crazy? LeBron ain't been on steroids until last year. Yeah. Like, that's really how motherfuckers act. You get to a certain point and stay there. Something not right. Yeah. Something. Jay Z said it best. They try to put the devil on me. Yeah. Black man can't be rich without worshiping the devil. Yeah. Like that shit is yeah. real. He said early in his career, as soon as I sell too much, watch them turn on him because that seems to be the thing that I earn for it's him. It's the truth. It's the God, the honest truth. People aren't used to people sustaining success, especially in physical, oh. physical sports and in artistic realms. I know because we, every rapper that they ever loved fell off at some point. It's real. I know we kind of brush to the side Jay features nowadays because it, it's, you know, Jay's kind of like... And it's kind of comical to do it. But when when he did that John with Rick Ross, what was that? Uh, the Devil is a Lie. That, was, that verse was so fucking perfect. True force fiction. Gotta be... True force fiction. What, what was the line? The, uh, 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 is it true force? True force? The Devil Gotta be gotta gotta be Illuminati if a nigga rich. No, that was that was, gotta be Illuminati if a nigga shine. That yeah. like that that shit was so cause that's what was going on at the time. Like yeah. Rihanna's Illuminati, Jay Illuminati, Kanye. It's like no, nah, these niggas just rich. <laughs> that's it. They just super up. <laughs> that's it. Birdman's like ain't that crazy though? Paul Allen not an Illuminati. Mark Cuban not <laughs> Illuminati. And Mark Cuban was homeless at thirty. Mark Cuban ain't sold his soul to the devil. <laughs> Ain't that wild? Yeah. Think about that. Le- LeBron Illuminati. 
It's insane what people will say about you when you reach to a certain point. It, it, and really, for me, it's just like black yeah, people. If, yeah, if you're black, if you reach to a certain point, it's like... Because black people are so used to failure and not being shit that they'll project that onto other people to where it's like a motherfucker hyper successful and they like, man, it's, it's something going on. And I like, watched that a lot this week. Ra had a great quote where Ra said, the one thing I realized watching this whole Drake and Pusher shit is... People will let their personal bias make them just say and and believe anything. Yeah, absolutely. To the point where they can't even be reasonable with you. Like you ever remember when Floyd Mayweather was doing his running around, and I mean like his real like his HBO to twenty four sevens. Like yeah, yeah. he was just stunting and fucking around on every little thing, pissing niggas off left and right, beating ass. Every single boxer he fought. I'm not talking about Mexicans, Italians, Puerto Ricans, you, none of them. Black people got behind whoever the fuck Floyd yeah. was fighting. You know why? Because they was just sick of him winning. Yeah. I had a motherfucker <laughs> tell me to my face, Floyd probably going to win, but I'm rooting for the other nigga. <laughs> like, you know you're going to be miserable Saturday <laughs> night. <laughs> like, you're going to be mad to the motherfucker you're gonna beat this nigga every round. Like You're going to be upset. You ain't gonna enjoy them wings, like, none of that shit. Like you going to the, the event Saturday night to not have a good time Juan and Man, enjoy yeah. black success, Juan, black excellence. Juan Manuel Marquez, one of the greatest boxers of our generation. Floyd beat this motherfucker twelve rounds to zero. Floyd came off a two year retirement. Juan Manuel Marquez at the time was the number two boxer in the world. Knocked Manny Pacquiao ass out. Knocked him out cold. Juan Manuel <laughs> was the number two boxer on earth. Floyd made him look silly. For IBO and WBF had that nigga at number two. Floyd yeah. came off of a two year retirement and made him look silly. Canelo was fifty two and zero, a fucking stud, young Mexican fighter, knocking everybody on out. HGH. Yeah, knocking everybody out. Floyd dominated him for 11 rounds. Made him look silly. He won 11 rounds to one in a shutout. Damn near a day pitch to Sugar Shay, according with that left hook that actually got okay. through, Floyd oh. said, oh, okay, I got your timing now. Yeah. Flo Sh Shane didn't win another <laughs> round. I'm like, how do y'all not respect? Like, we just, me and Taylor were talking about it. Motherfuckers like Skip, I ain't listened to Skip Bayless in like seven, eight years. I be Actually, when people repost him on Facebook or quote him on Twitter yeah. I be like mad cause it's like why do y'all even why you follow this shit right. this motherfucker hates Tiger Woods Kobe Bryant LeBron James and Floyd Mayweather that's the Mount Rushmore of black sports yes in the last 20 years on, only other person that's probably gonna go there is Serena Williams that's the Mount Rushmore of black sports Straight up. he finds something wrong with every one of them I don't listen to you dog because there's no way you enjoy sports how the fuck you enjoy golf and hate Tiger what it's two golfers on earth <laughs> that have won a triple crown. You know who they are? Tiger Woods and Ben Hogan. You know when Ben Hogan won his? 53. Tiger <laughs> did some shit that ain't been done in 60 fucking years. Yeah. How do you hate Tiger Woods and you like golf? How? How do you hate basketball? How do you like basketball and hate LeBron and Kobe? Yeah, that's How do you like boxing and Yo, hate that, Floyd? The, you don't even make sense. The recent movement to try to devalue what Kobe Bryant did in the NBA is fucking weird. Dog, the movement be, to dog. devalue anybody that has reached a level of greatness is weird to me. I personally think LeBron is the best player ever. When I say that, I'll always say, yo, Jordan to me is the number two. Jordan's a fucking great. He's a absolute legend. <laughs> I'm never going to just throw the man in the bushes or throw what he did in the bushes yeah. because Jordan made the fucking league what the fuck it is. I'm never going to knock that. Yeah. Bill Russell held the league the fuck together. Dr. J, Wilt Chamberlain, they held the fucking league together. Magic and Bird, the game don't go global if it ain't for them Absolutely. setting up Jordan. You know what I mean? Certain you, I, I just am a person of, I'm not disrespecting greatness. I don't care who you are. Black, white, any of that shit. And... Drake to me, I look at Drake like I I said it before when we was doing the basketball players compared to rappers and shit. I was like, Lil Wayne is Drake. I mean, uh, Lil Wayne is D Wade and Drake is LeBron. That's exactly what it is because Drake challenges the shit you grew up on the same yeah. way LeBron does. He makes you look at the game and realize, like, damn, it ain't just about scoring fifty. Yeah. But you know what's crazy? I saw a crazy stat tonight that fucked my head up. I kind of knew this, but it fucked my head up. LeBron is averaging 34.9 points per game in Game 7s in the playoff history. Mm -hmm. It's the highest in playoff history. But he's not clutch. And But <laughs> you know, what motherfuckers Jordan stands will be like, oh, because Jordan ain't played no Game 7s. And it's like, yeah, well, Jordan was on the best team all the time. Yes. 
Like, and I tell my my homie, LeBron has gone to eight finals. He's been a favorite twice, twice. Yeah. Two thousand and thirteen. Against the Mavericks. No, 2012, against they were favorites against the Mavericks. And then 2000 and... 15, probably. No, not 15, because they were, they were underdogs Spurs, all the times against the Warriors. One of the Spurs, one of the ones they... Uh, no, they, yeah, against the Spurs in 14, 13, they were favorites. 14, they was underdogs. 12, they was underdogs, because 12, they played the Thunder. Thunder was favorites. And then when he played the Spurs in 07, they was underdogs. Like, he's going to the finals eight times and been an underdog six times. Yeah. Jordan Jordan went to the final six times. He was an underdog once, like that. Like, but I'm not disrespecting no greatness. So that's that's right. my joint. But it's like, yeah, Drake really challenges the fact that growing up it was like, yo, you got to be the street nigga who's getting into the most yeah, shit. You got to be the ugly, dirty street, ugly, dirty rapper that caught 15 cases and, and sold all the bricks and yeah. killed a bunch of niggas. Yeah. Or you, or you can't be considered the best. And, 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 and Drake the, has come along and it's like, no, nah, yo, you can really make a song with Rihanna. And turn around and out rap niggas. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, it just bothers people because it's like, it's like how you the biggest pop star had a best performing songs and do the rap shit this 6 p.m. in New York's and yeah. 5 a.m. in Toronto's and 6 a.m. in. How do you do all of this? How do you do all of this shit? Yeah, it's crazy. It doesn't make sense. My favorite rapper fell off after two years. Yeah. How does this happen? Uh, another <laughs> year or two, they're going to say Drake on HGH. <laughs> Just the way it go They're gonna be like He on some type of Fucking steroids yeah. There's no way around it Biggest fucking concerts Like yo The top 10 highest Grossing concerts He's like They're probably like Six times He got six <laughs> of them. I, you know, How did you know Cause he's a six guy <laughs> I was looking at The list the other day Of the top grossing Tours ever He's yeah. got number one Three Four Six Eight Nine Summer 16 tour Drake vs Lil Wayne Drake vs. Lil Wayne is number two. Summer 16 is number one. Yeah. Drake vs. Lil... Watch the Throne is number two. Okay. Drake vs. Lil Wayne That's is num- number three. The Joan he had with Future is five. Um, The one from his second album, The Take Care. What was that Joan he did? I can't uh, remember the name of it. it. Regardless. Yeah. He's on there six times. Right. And I'm looking at that, like, looking at Floyd with the CompuBox joints for yeah. the pay-per-view. And it's just like, damn, like... Top 10 highest grossing events ever. Floyd is like, he got the top four. Yeah. Like, fuck being <laughs> on there four times. Like, yeah. one, two, three, and four are Pacquiao, all his fights. Pacquiao, McGregor, Canelo. And uh, uh, Cotto. It's like, crazy. It's WrestleMania's is on there, like number 10 and shit. Like, shit is wild, man. And all that money goes directly to Floyd. Yep. Yeah. Because he's a promoter and a performer. And my, my old head in my job, he like... Yeah, he cool and all, but don't compare him to no Ali. And I'm like, you, I, I can understand your joint. You know, you live through the riots. You know, you look at Ali a little differently than me. Floyd the GOAT, not because he never lost, which is a factor. He 50 and 0. Yeah. Not because he's one of only four people to ever win a belt in five different divisions. That is a factor. He won 19 titles over five different divisions. No one's done that. That's a factor. But because Floyd, unlike Tyson, Ali, Frazier, Evander, all these niggas, Floyd stepped out of the ring, turned the shit around, and crushed promotion to the point where the Don Kings don't exist. Yeah. The point where, like, Bob Arum hates that nigga. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because like, he has to pander to what he wants. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Floyd literally, f- like, you look at Tyson... Tyson Old Crib 50 got it. Evander Old Crib Ross got it. Right. Like Joe Frazier Gym is a furniture store. <laughs> cheap ass furniture. Not even a <laughs> not even a Raymore and Flanagan. Like it's cheap ass furniture they selling out that motherfucker. Like all of these niggas lost everything. Yeah. Floyd literally got all the money, all the titles, all and and literally done set it up to where all the young niggas can eat now. He got the, the young boy that's on fire with all the tattoos. I can't think of his name right now. Uh he just oh, tank- Gravata, Gravante, Gervonta, Gervonta, Gervonta. Yeah, Tank Davis. Yeah, yeah Tank. He, he he set all of them up to where it's like he got Tank, he got Errol Spence, he got Bado, he, he got, Spence, he got yeah. Badu Jack, er, who everybody's afraid of. Errol Spence. Yeah, nobody wants to fight him. Nobody wants that left. Keith Thurman says, "You know, I'm gonna go ahead and get this surgery." Yeah, uh, <laughs> knee been fucking up. This <laughs> shit's <laughs> like. They hit too hard. I don't got time for this shit. But yeah, man, it's real. You just got to respect. Like, I get the nostalgia aspect. And this is the same in rap, sport, all. I get it. Yeah. 
Yes, Wu Tang Clan came along and was the shit straight out of motherfucking Staten Island. I get it. They were so raw, niggas was the shit. Biggie came along, Biggie's the man. X, J, Nas, all of them. These new guys are just in another arena by themselves that no, because they're doing it on a level that no one ever thought. Yeah, would because see. rap is the number one genre now. Like, like it's pop. <laughs> rap culture is popular culture. Like it, Drake it permeates is, everything. Drake is on Forbes list making buku money. Yeah, hundreds, hundreds, hundred million. Like Drake's on Forbes for making a hundred million in a yes. year. The weekend got a ninety-two million dollar tour advance from like, Live Nation, and he recouped it in two tours. Yeah, in one year. Yeah. So you know what that means? He's about to get a hundred and fifty million dollar tour advance next go around. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't know what to say, <laughs> honestly. The uh, can I ask you this real quick? What was the Pusher T and Turd? You got me saying Turd Man. <laughs> what was the Pusher T and Birdman shit? Oh, so on the uh, Breakfast Club interview with Pusha T, they was just talking about you know the history of the beef and this, that, and the third. And he said that he ran into Birdman in L.A. Okay, in a hotel, and uh, he was on the elevator. So he's like, I'm on the elevator. Birdman gets on the elevator in all his Birdmanness. He got his crew with him and all that, and he like, what's Brackens? He's like, ain't nothing. He's like, you good? Yeah, I'm good. Nigga, you sure you good? And then he, he's like, the elevator went to the sixth floor. <laughs> That's my he floor. Got off. <laughs> <laughs> and that was that. But it was like such a bird man moment. Like, what's bracket? Nigga, you good? You sure you good? Like, what you mean? Am I sure? Yes, I'm sure. I'm good. I'm about to go get me some bagels. <laughs> now. I'm at the complimentary they got breakfast. the continental breakfast now. Yeah, yeah. Everybody give me a poppy bagel. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if you want one. We don't know which room you in. That's crazy. I ain't know that. <laughs> yeah, they, so they they had an incident. You know what I'm saying? How long ago was this? He said in, he said in the last year. Oh shit! Okay. Shout out to, t- to Turd Man. Yeah. I hate Bird. <laughs> All right, let's get into this real quick because this is one of my uh, favorite little joints from this week: the Rhyme Fest versus Kanye and Kim Kardashian. Oh god! How ridiculous. You you want to go like what has the world come to? What has it? That's exactly what I'm thinking. <laughs> like my thing is this, right? All right, for those of you that, that yeah, let's explain the situation. For those of you that don't have Twitter or don't really see the things that go on on Twitter, basically, Rhyme Fest tweeted Drake and was like, "Hey, whenever you get the money that good music, uh, because he knows Drake's a, a, a chess player and he's a st- strategist, yeah, so he'll use something like this to, in his advantage. Sure. He's like, so hey, you know." When you get the money that good music owes you, can you donate it to Donda House so that the youth of Chicago have somewhere to go that's a safe haven for them to be creative and, you know, explore the arts and blah, blah, blah. I asked Kanye about it and he said, fuck the youth of Chicago. Right. So Kim Kardashian and all of her Kanye-ness jumps on Twitter a series of tweets and she starts going at Romfest. And instead of dealing with the fact that the social justice aspect of it and the fact that her husband allegedly said, fuck the youth of Chicago, she wants to get on here and talk about fake Yeezys and how I seen you in the studio and this, that, and the third. Like, what the fuck do they got to do with the price of tea in China, sis? Yeah. Like, and it's just like a weird dichotomy that, like, she went full white woman on this black man and basically like start talking about shit that don't have nothing to do with nothing and like kind of almost like hit the panic button like do you trying to leech off of us and this and that he like ma'am your husband invited me to the studio yeah. I didn't contact him and I know but, some of you like might not and I don't want to sound like Kim K might not understand or know who Rhyme Fest is yes Rhyme Fest is a rapper from Chicago he did a lot of writing for Kanye in the early days yeah. he actually had a uh, what was his hit brand new Remember that? He had a hit brand new, but he also... That's actually where Bria Miles came from. Yeah. Remember that? She was in that video. He co-wrote Jesus Walks. He was co-wrote, supposed to won be a Grammy on for Jesus it. Walks. He was supposed to be on Jesus Walks. Yeah. So it's like, he's a very accomplished writer, and, uh, and he's somebody that's very important in the Kanye West uh, history. Yeah. Like him, like we say, him, GLC, Consequence. Him, those, GLC, and Consequence are the most important things. Those are the pillars yeah. of the first five or six years of like Kanye Westness before, mm-hmm. you know, he started exploring with other aspects of music and yeah, all of that. I, I said the other day, like, looking at, and Kim just wouldn't stop. She kept tweeting. She kept kept, and I'm just like, Kim gonna fuck around and lose Nubian White Queen of the Year. <laughs> oh, oh, and it's like, if she don't shut the fuck up, she might lose this shit. Because it just literally got to the point where it was like, all right, you're more so just trying to play him. Yes. 
He's being dead serious about a real live issue. Yes. And Kanye, the thing is, Kanye comes out and be like, I want I want it to be better for them kids in Chicago. But then you flip side, you're like, man, fuck them. Man, fuck them. I ain't coming back to Chicago. Yeah. Like, so. I mean, and the thing is, somebody like Kim Kardashian, who's famous for being famous, and, I, and we love the woman. Don't get it fucked up. Like, but you can't talk crazy to a person who's out here really doing the work and putting the work in in his community he's an alderman in chicago like you can't talk crazy or talk down to him when one he's helped your husband and then two he's really out here putting his feet to the pavement and 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 going around and putting his hands on you know on his community and really trying to be a positive influence. You can't then turn around and talk about some shit that don't have nothing to do with nothing to try to discredit that man. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. Like it's fucking weird and it's dismissive. And as a black man, I particularly don't appreciate the shit because number one, Kanye keep, keep your bitch in check. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like first and foremost, because she shouldn't even be speaking to that man. Like in, in regards to an issue that y'all have, like, if you're not going to defend yourself, your wife shouldn't be jumping to your defense. Like, don't really. It's a bad look. Yeah, real talk. Because like, it looks like you're guilty of what he's saying. If she has all the fervor and all of the rebuttals, and you don't have anything to say. Yeah, and I mean, she just was going on and on and on and on and yeah, on. I stopped looking. I I saw about seven tweets, and I was like, I'm not looking at no more. And at first, like my initial tweet was. When I got on, I saw her like, I know some of you might be like, who the fuck is Rom Fest? And I was like, I giggled. But then I'm like, wait, let me see what the fuck is going on. Yeah. And then I, once I got the backstory and then I saw his response to it, like, yeah, what the fuck is wrong? Like, what? <laughs> like, and I, I really was just like, that's where we've reached yes. in society. Yes, absolutely. Like, you could literally come out and be like, yo, I want to do something for the kids. I want to have this set up so we can have X, Y, and Z. And a motherfucker who's uber famous could play you like, yo, your sneaks was fake. And motherfuckers are worried more yeah, about And it'll that. just distract them from the real issue at hand here. We trying to help these kids. We trying to save lives. And you talking about fucking sneakers. Yeah. Real shit. You want some bullshit. Mind you, Yeezys weren't fake, most likely. You know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like just uh, in, in the in the grand scheme of things, yeah, like you um, you write you wrote all these multi platinum hits for Kanye West. I doubt that you Yeezys. I'm was pretty fake. sure Yeezys weren't fake, but you know what the fuck do I know? Uh, hopefully they can get the whole Donda's West shit in order. Yes, please. Kim straight tweeted them was like, "Yeah, we want to take that from you so my kids can run it the way it's supposed to be run." And I'm so like, "When is that going to be? In thirty years, as opposed to somebody that want to do it right now?" You ever seen the video <laughs> meme of the the chunk chubby white young white boy that's cooking crying? You ever seen that? <laughs> yeah. Somebody tw- tweeted that today, like that's going to be uh, Kim kids working at Donda's house. <laughs> 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 Feed the niggas. <laughs> I, I fell the fuck out off of that. Like, yeah, like, what the fuck are you going to do with Donda South? <laughs> Someone who's never been to Southside Chicago. That's like me telling, like, you know, the the Nas, like, yo, man, put that money up so I can, you know, help the build the gardens in, in Queensbridge. Queensbridge. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, nigga, fuck you know about Queensbridge. Yeah. Like, man, we, fucking sit. we live in a world that's, like, overrun by... Reality, like, and this is the craziest shit on earth. The reality shows have taken over the world so much that the bigger you are on the reality show scale, that's how much wreck you catch in life. Yeah, you look at Real Housewives of Atlanta; they all a bunch of ratchet, annoying hoes, and the, they all fifty, and they all fifty. <laughs> the most annoying fifty-year-old ratchet hoe is Nene. Yes, Nene gets to be a star outside of the show Nene's, on other things. Nene's doing. Comedy dates. You look what the at, fuck does Nene Leakes you look know about at, being a comedian? You look at Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. They're all a bunch of annoying ratchet hoes. Yes. The most annoying and ratchet one is Tommy. Tommy gets to be a star outside of the. It, it's just weird how that yeah. happens now. Like you look look at Scott Disick. How much he blew up off of the keeping up with the car. Like yeah. and that's really the, like what the world we live in now. Like it's so reality show driven. Absolutely. That the bigger you are on the reality show scale, that's how big. Look at what's the one with Shaq. Uh, Oh, uh, basketball wives. Basketball wives. They're all annoying and dumb. And, and, con- and they're all 50. And they're all 50. <laughs> the most annoying and ratchet one is, uh, what's Doug Christie's wife? Oh, uh, Jackie Christie. She's on every fucking thing. It's it's just like that. I would like to shoot Jackie Christie with a paintball gun. <laughs> like, not to really harm her, but just to like, 
cool the fuck out. Like, like this where it break the skin. Like, like yo, you sixty. Yo, cool the fuck like, out. Take it so, easy. Like how you on TV wilding every Monday, every fucking for day, ten years. Like basketball has been on like ten years, my nigga. Yeah. Like you've been on TV wilding every Monday for ten years straight. You had problems with every bad young chick that came through the show. You had problem with Drea. You had problem with Malaysia. You had problems with uh. Who else recently? Uh, I don't watch it, so I the, can't the, tell you uh, The chick that got the baby by Tariq Evans, Angel Brinks. Like, you had a problem with everybody. Every bad young chick, you you head dinosaur trying to fucking, trying to burn a uh, situation down. All right. Uh, any more thoughts on Ron Fest and Kim K? No, nah, I'm done with that. Kim yeah. K, get it together. Get off. Yeah, you, you're going to lose your crown. Ashley Graham, <laughs> Ashley Graham going to come get it from you. You're bucking. Uh... In uh, local nigger news, um, AR Ab and Cassidy apparently are beefing again. I didn't notice. I just found out today. Sparked it back up. I've I, <laughs> so, I, I haven't been. I've been watching my <laughs> global nigger news and not my local. Yeah. So I didn't notice what was going so, on. So Drink Champs has a podcast that they produce called Thugged Out Thursdays, right? Which is like Nori's weed uh, rollers have their own podcast. So it's like all the niggas that's not <laughs> quite equipped to go on Drink Champs go on Thugged Out Like Thursdays. the niggas that be standing around and niggas shit? Yeah. They them, be funny as shit something yeah, about Them niggas stuff. have their own podcast okay. now called Thugged Out Thursdays. So AR Ab did the Thugged Out Thursdays podcast and he basically told the story of the whole murder shit, murder case with Cassidy and da-da-da, I caught a body for him, blah, 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 blah. So then Cassidy came on the show a month later and was like, yo... I honestly don't know why AR Ab is still telling this story because number one, you didn't catch a body for me. You caught a body because the niggas that you was with was doing stupid shit and got into it with the nigga and he shot and they shot back. And then ultimately those same people told on me. They're the reason I went to jail. So I don't understand why he's still telling this story when his friends are rats. Like, so then in a typical AR ad fashion, instead of dealing with the truth at hand, he put out a diss record against Cassidy. Oh, okay. Is the diss record any good? It's very good. Okay, I'm going to listen to it tonight. Yeah. I still haven't listened to Drake New John either. Uh, I'm upset. Yeah, I saw it. I haven't listened people to it. People hate it. I actually, like... I mean, people hate Drake, so... It, I mean, it sounds... Is it, is it good or is it bad? It's... Okay, I haven't listened to. It. I haven't like even clicked yeah, it. It's okay. I, I, my thing. I, I'm. This is the crazy part. I took a time out to listen to the W freestyle. I, I'm still listening to Pusher, and I feel like this has to stop. Ra talks about it every now and then, but we literally live in an era where motherfuckers like One rush to listen to listen to something just so they can rush to the timeline and be like, "Oh no, that's trash." Yeah. Oh no, that's dope. Yep. And it's like. No, it, you have to take a you have to take time yeah. with with anything. There's so many people in my comments the last two days, like on 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 18th listen that Drake Joe hard. Like, well, you were trying to make it. It was hard in the first listen. You was trying to make it trash because you got an agenda or whatever, one way or another, whatever the case may be. And the end result is the whole narrative was that Drake was scared to push it. Then he smoked the nigga. Now people making other excuses. They moving the goalposts now. Yeah, they do that a lot. I see that a whole lot. Yeah, but yeah, I'm gonna check the AR app joint out. The, yeah. Um, so nobody's in in danger or anything. I don't think so. Okay. He probably just ended up beating Cassidy up or something like that. I don't know. But he uh he somebody was like yeah Ab, on somebody on Instagram was like yeah app uh they said that uh Cass said that your friends told on him. He said nigga they told on me too. <laughs> they <laughs> they told on me too. But them niggas is no longer with us, so we don't speak on them. Yeah. So apparently whoever these guys are They uh, are no longer with us What is it looking like in the game Taylor? Uh, Cavs are up by 3 76-73 with a 2.45 left Oh you don't need to update They up 78-74 <coughs> Yeah I got the uh, <laughs> The bootleg stream going on over here Yeah cause I'm looking at it on my uh, phone we Need a resolution here Cavs in Boston Ross tweeting like the 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 Cavs and the Warriors again makes me so sad. <laughs> <laughs> we was talking about this last night. It's a lot better than Al Horford being the star in the playoffs. <laughs> Yo, so. please, we can we can get in that real quick. That's one of the topics on here. Please understand, I I, I understand the 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 nuances of things needing to change. I get that, and I don't want to sound you know uh, what's the word I'm looking for. Um, uh, cliche. Yeah, 
I, I don't want to see anything other than the Warriors Cavs. You don't want to see Steph crossing Al Horford at the top of the key? Like, I, like I'm sorry. <laughs> like, call me whatever you want. I don't want to see Jeff Green just got the rock back with a minute left. Cavs up five. The um, I don't want to see a Rockets Celtics finals. <laughs> Nobody wants to see with that no shit. Kyrie. I am. Sh- <laughs> I'm gonna be watching fucking Property Brothers on HGTV. <laughs> I'm telling you now. Like I don't want to see J- fucking Gerald Green pulling up from 35 in transition versus Al Horford mid range Jimmy off the glass. <laughs> I don't want to. That's just gonna be an ass <laughs> game. I'm sorry. You know what I mean? So. As cliche as it is, I feel like you need the love-hate aspect of LeBron and the love-hate aspect of Kevin Durant and the Warriors to make a compelling finals. I'm yeah. sorry. And realistically, the Warriors, if they make it with LeBron and them this year, they might sweep them because the Cavs team is awful. Yes, it is. But, but, oh my God. George Hill just hit a fucking three-point shot. Cavs is up seven with a minute 16 left. Uh, might be over. Might be getting our wish. Cavs Warriors four, baby. C- Terry, C- Terry C- Rozier four. is 0 for 9 tonight from three. <laughs> oh. What are you looking at? I'm refreshing it now because I'm way behind. <laughs> <laughs> he said, ooh, and they're on timeout. <laughs> ooh. But, uh, yeah, um, I where are you at with it? Cavs Warriors four. Uh, I... D- James Harden doesn't deserve to win a win a championship. Yo, listen, I I hate James Harden <laughs> and Chris Paul. I I don't hate James Harden. I actually like James Harden a lot. He's just completely full of shit. No, Chris Paul, I hate watching what? James Harden play basketball. Is the most like he literally just comes down the court, travels and steps back and <laughs> hits and goes for a three. Or he looks for ways to get fouled. So them niggas shot twenty five threes last night in the first half. <laughs> Like, they're ridiculous. Like, Daryl Morey said he's hoping that they can find a way to get up to shooting 53s a game next season. That's what the fuck it is with them. <laughs> they're literally just chucking up threes. <laughs> fuck it. <clears throat> it's a low percentage shot. Like, I don't understand, man. Yep, Jalen Brown just missed a three. LeBron went to the line. Cavaliers is up 10. Oh, yeah, it's over. Up 10 with a minute left. Now we just need the Warriors to do their job tomorrow, baby. Yeah. I can't look at Marcus Smart anymore. <laughs> I, I, well, I, I'll be, I'm not going to lie. Marcus Smart is my most hated player. In he had a joint tonight. I'm pretty sure you watched it because I saw it on my phone. LeBron drove to the lane and swung his arm up. His arm did not touch him. Marcus Smart fell all over the floor <laughs> and got a fucking <laughs> offensive foul. Yep. I hate him. I hate everything <laughs> about him. I'm so happy these niggas is about to go to fuck home, dog. I hate the Celtics. I hate Boston. Me and Taylor was talking about it before we started. Bill Russell had his jersey retirement with nobody in the stands because the people of Boston didn't fuck with him at all. And in return, he didn't fuck with them. And just knowing shit like that will make me never like Boston. Yeah. Never. I can never root for Boston. I, I never had a Boston Kyrie's cream one donut. Of, Kyrie's one of my favorite, one of my two or three favorite players, and I just can't root for Boston. I'll root for Kyrie. And a loss, but I can't root for Boston. I'm good. I hate them niggas, man. I I hate everything about Boston. I just, I don't like them at all. So I'm happy it looks like they're going home. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to that. Shout out to the underachieving, Boston. Cavs is up 10 with 51 seconds left. It's over, pretty much, unless some crazy shit goes down. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to that. We are all witnesses. Tweets are on the timeline now. So <laughs> yeah, it's looking like Brian and them are going to pull this one out. Uh, anything else you want to run down? We've had, this has been one of our best little conversations. Hell yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, was there anything else on here? We got it. We kind of got into everything. We got in everything. Got into it pretty quick. Oh, yeah. One last thing. Uh, it was a news story that broke over the weekend. The White family, they got two kids. I sent it to y'all. None of y'all responded. Yeah. Y'all were all I, high. I, I had seen it on uh, World Star. Yeah, I saw it on. I was actually just uh, on the world, like my work, my news app. Yeah, the world news. And I saw it. Yeah, got two children, a biological kid and an adopted kid. The adopted kid is black. Apparently, white family dropped off the white kid at a sitter, went out of town, and quote unquote forgot the black daughter in, in the, the car, car seat. overnight in the car seat. 
Well, no, it wasn't overnight. It was during the he dropped the he basically I because I, I told you I, I literally read the whole entire drop right. from like multiple sources. He goes to the daycare, drops the kids off, or so he thinks, takes the one daughter in, forgets the daughter in the car seat outside. Drives back home, parks his car, leaves to go to work, and hops in an Uber, like a ride share. Oh, shit. Hops in that, goes to the airport. He leaves fucking town. Baby's in the car seat. The mom goes to daycare when she gets off work to pick up the kids. They like, yo, your, your, your uh, husband only dropped off one kid. She like, the fuck? So she trying to get in contact with this motherfucker. He had already flown to, they were in Nashville, right? They're yeah. in Nashville. He flew to... I want to say Kansas. I think it's Kansas. I'm not sure. But he flew. I'm going to say Kansas. She's trying to get a hold of him. Like, yo, what the fuck? Like, they saying you only dropped off one kid. Then she realized, like, the kid ain't home. She goes out to check the car, sees the baby in the car seat. She tried doing CPR, all that shit on the bed. The baby was already gone. The, like, the paramedics came, took the baby to the hospital. They pronounced her dead on arrival. That's so nice. she had already checked. They said the temperature reached 91 degrees that day. So, you know, you figure she might have been dead for a couple hours yeah. sitting in a car with, you know, in the sun with no. That's fucking crazy. Yeah, I seen that shit and I'm just like, damn. And I, of course, everybody is going berserk like, oh, they did it on purpose. And, this, and I'm just like, I don't know if they did it on purpose. I, I can't say that. I can't yeah, attest to that. I don't know that they did it on purpose, but at the very least, a negligence or child abuse They're not even charge. being charged. That's what I'm saying. Something has to be filed. Like, that's crazy that you can that a kid can die and you can be charged with nothing. That's fucking insane. Yeah. That, that like, really, like, fucked my head up and, like, kind of ruined my day when I, uh, when I kind of got into that. Yeah, man. Uh, here goes real quick. I want to talk about this real quick. Another crazy story I saw today. And this one was from Nashville. Uh, so I think this, I think the, I think that was from Nashville, too. So Nashville, y'all, y'all are getting like Florida. Nashville, y'all weird. <laughs> His name is Matthew Charles. He got arrested. He was in the Army, got out of the Army. He served the country, got out of the Army, had trouble finding work, whatever, whatever. He started selling drugs. He sold drugs to an undercover s cop, you know, a fucking, uh, what they call it? Um, CI? CI. Yeah, CI. Sold drugs to an undercover cop. Gets arrested. He was selling a nice amount of drugs or whatever. He gets sentenced to 35 years, right? He gets sentenced to 35 years in 1995. 1996. He, the 1995 was when he got locked up. He gets sentenced in 1996. He does 22 years, right? Obama's administration passed a thing where, like, people Redu reduce, reduce sentences. sentences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He gets out of jail. He got out of jail two years ago, 2016. He got out of jail, picked his life back up. He's been out of jail for two years. He... Found a job, works the job, right? Mind you, while he was in jail, he got his degree. He became a, a law and a tax, like not tax, a uh, basically like a, uh, hold on, because I, I put it in my phone. I got to get to it, hold up. He became a law clerk, certified okay. law clerk. He uh, taught a GED program in jail. Helped all the new people coming in. Uh, he was helping them get acclimated to the system. He was helping them after their public defenders, of course, had dropped their okay. case or whatever, whatever. He kept the secrets of people who were illiterate in the jail to not get ridiculed in this yeah. and was helping dudes learn how to read, learn how to do math, learn how to write and do resumes and everything. A real reform. He was like it. a real yeah. lot. They said he was a model inmate, never had any incident. 22 years, he didn't have one disciplinary infraction right. while he was in there. So he gets out under the Obama thing for, uh, you know, reducing the sentences and shit like that. Gets out, he's out, finds a job, works it. He finds a, he meets a lady. They've been together now for almost two years since he's been out. He's like a model neighbor, all of this shit. The fucking judicial system realized that he shouldn't have been let go under the Obama administration release thing because he had had a prior conviction before the one that he got sentenced to the 35 years. So that shit went to court and a fucking 
Supreme Court judge ruled, oh, he should have never been let go in the first place. He should go back to jail. He got to come back and finish his time. He been out of jail for two years, living good, got a house, got a car, no incidents, got a wife, living good, good job, and they're making him go back to jail. He turned himself in this past week. That's nuts. And, um, you know, I just, I read that shit the other day, and I'm just like, the, the the ridiculousness that goes on, you know what I'm saying? Like here in this fucking country is just like, like my thing is in that scenario, he's a model inmate. He does 22 out of a 35 year sentence. It comes up for review. If he gets out of jail, and he's not supposed to. That's y'all bad. Like, why does the fuck does this man got to go back to jail for y'all fucking up? His name is Matthew Charles. Look it up. I'm looking at it now. And people were going crazy, like, you know, writing letters, picking and doing all this craziness. And he's in the he's in the feds because that, he was locked up federally. Yeah. So, you know, with the feds, they could send you anywhere. His fucking lawyer was like. They wanted to put him in a federal facility that was low is like the lowest low risk, security, low yeah. security. And it was three and a half hours away from where he was in Nashville because his girlfriend was like, she's going to come see him every yeah. week. Man, he's about to go do 10. Right. Like, he got to do a dumb. Damn. And he's 51. So, you know, he like I'm, my thing that I'm more so worried about is what is my health going to be like when I get out at 61? Yeah. You know, for, you figure for him, he did 20 years. So he ain't like, what? I done jail. I ain't yeah. tripping off that. But my thing is, I got a new life. I got a new woman. How am I to tell her to wait when she shouldn't have to? Yeah. I, like, she knew who I was. She knew what I did, whatever, whatever. But I'm not on that. Like, I'm 50 years old. I'm not yeah. 20 anymore. But the, the feds sent him to fucking... Kansas, which is like nine hours away. Uh, so it's like she can't even like get to go see him every week. And I'm just like, y'all pieces of shit here for real, man. Like, re- I've read that shit. I- I'll send you the link for the story. Yeah. It's the most depressing shit I've read in a couple months. I'm just like, damn. Like, you get out, you're a productive member of society, doing right. everything right. My thing is this if prison is a rehabilitation, if I'm rehabilitated, why the fuck are you sending why me back? Send me back? I'm what y'all want. I'm the finished product of what you would want out He's of the He's exemplary street. of what the fuck you want yeah. a reformed inmate to be. Had no disciplinary actions in jail, got certified as a law, got certified and became a law clerk, taught and worked with many inmates who came in that didn't even have the basic skills to read and write. Got out of jail, lived his life good, had no incidents, no trouble, had a nice little life that he was about to just ride off into his fucking last years. Yeah. And y'all come like, oh, no, nah, we fucked up. You wasn't supposed to be out under that joint because you had some bullshit from even before that. Come back in here and do this dime real quick. That's like, I watched the joint. He was like, he had an iPhone. Like, he was giving his girl, like, this be the last time I'm on my, my phone. He, they, yeah. he had to, he had to, uh, he had, he had a crazy boy. He had good credit. He had to turn it. He had an SUV. He had to turn it in, like, cause he leased it. He's like, I gotta turn that in. He gave up the keys to his apartment that he had and all that. And I'm just like, this is fucked up. Like, damn. This is America. Oh man! I ain't mean to like fuck up the whole mood of the show, but they just find new creative ways to just fuck shit up and fuck people over. Ain't that crazy? I've read that shit today, and I'm just like, how the fuck did this happen? But his name is Matthew Charles. He just went back into the jail. Damn, he's in free Matt, yo. Free him, yo. He's he's from Nashville. That's where the whole thing takes place. But he's in the federal system, and they and they shipped him to Kansas. So yeah, look it up, man. Yo, that shit is crazy though. But yeah, I read that shit today. I'm just like, god damn, we awful here in this country, like. Who's his lawyer? He had a, uh, a um, public defender. Public defender, like federal public defender. He he was talking on the phone with her, like when he he because they they gave him forty five days to get his affairs in order. Yeah, when they realized he was going back to jail, or whatever. And the crazy part was his his lawyer and his uh, lady was on the john like. I've, the lawyer's like I've never seen anything like this. Like I've dealt with dudes who knew they were going to jail for their first time for a year and they go on the run dude she's like i've never seen anything like it this man has a good life has lived a good life his entire time he's been out went through the complete he didn't escape he went through the complete procedures of what it is to be released from federal prison did everything the right way he's handled this with so much dignity and class that she's like i it's almost like chilling and just like his girlfriend started crying she's like no no we don't do that 
God got us. We're going to be all right. And walked into the jail to go do a dumb. Like, do you know the the G that you got to have inside of you to be able to do that? Like, no, no problem. Whew. Like, that's crazy, right? They couldn't come get you right now to do a dumb. Fuck. Oh, Fuck. Like, no, that's crazy. I'm just like, that's a solid ass fucking man, dog. Like, to be able to just take that, like, and it don't break you down to where you haul off and do something crazy or yeah. act out of your emotions. Yeah, I'd have, I'd have had to take them on tour. They'd have had to catch me where they can. I ain't turning myself to do a dime on top Frank of. Frank Abagnale, on, I'm out here being a pilot, a <laughs> dime. Listen, <laughs> like, a, a dime on top of 22? Oh, no. I'd have been in Argentina somewhere. Crazy, man. I'd have been like, yeah, I'm going to use these 45 days to get the fuck out of the country. I got 45? All right. <laughs> That's 44 that more than like I need. That sounds like 44. <laughs> exactly. That sounds like 44 more than I need, bitches. Yeah. But, uh, you know, good show. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, As stated, uh, the Roost Picnic is upon us. This coming Saturday, June 2nd. Make sure y'all go to roostpicnic.com. Get y'all tickets. Uh, we will be on the podcast stage, uh, powered by Silent Philly from 1.30 to 2 p.m. Special guest, Lil Baby, hopefully. If not, just get me and Matt for 30 minutes, followed by us perusing the, uh, the festival grounds. It is official. LeBron and them have beat the Celtics. Hey, man, congrats, uh, The Celtics Brian. have not lost all playoffs at home until they couldn't lose at home. Until today. In the playoffs. <laughs> Uh, Terry Rozier might have fucked up his whole stuff <laughs> in one game. Terry Rozier was looking like one of the best guards in the playoffs. He literally had four points tonight. <laughs> oh for nine from three. Terry Rozier has hit threes like Steph Curry this fucking final. So much for all I mean, that, this uh, we don't need Kyrie talk that motherfuckers was trying to uh, spew out there. LeBron finished the game. Crazy to think his over-under today in Vegas was 38. The highest it's ever been for any player. You know you can like prop bet on what yeah. they'll score. His, they had him at thirty eight tonight, highest has ever been for any player. He finished tonight with thirty five. <laughs> so if you took it, I know you. Well, he's right on his average though for uh, game sevens. He was at thirty four point nine was his average. He had put up thirty five. Thirty five points, fifteen boards, nine assists, shot fifty percent from the field. <laughs> Prana animal dog. It's just unreal. Yeah. And he do this. They said the other day in game. Sixes or game sevens in his entire career, he's had either 40 points or a triple-double. That's just nuts. Like, that's what he averaged. It's like he either going to give you 40 or a triple-double. He was an assist off from a triple-double. That's crazy. Got Jeff Green. I, did I tell you before the game? Yep. Either Jeff Green showing up or Yeah, Jeff Green had uh, 19. Uh, they missed a lot of fucking threes. J.R. Smith had 12. You know, we'll take it. We'll take it. It's better than the four you normally uh, put up with you and your backcourt mate. Crazy is that the Cavs only played eight people tonight. I'm, did LeBron play all 48? Uh, Hold on. I can go to that. I think he sat on the bench for probably like a minute before each quarter minutes. ends probably. <laughs> Bullshit. LeBron played 48 minutes. Oh. 48 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> LeBron did not sit I'll there. rest when I die. Yeah. Crazy. Damn. Jason Tatum, of course. Uh, he had 24 points, but he had a negative 17 and plus minus. Plus minus. And I know you niggas probably don't like care about plus minus, but <laughs> it matters. That shit matters because <laughs> that means you're not winning when you're, <laughs> when you're on the floor. You, you putting up meaningless baskets and you giving yeah. up a ton of points. Like you ever watch a lot of bench players, Jones will be like a plus because they come off the bench and that'd be like the get back for the team. Yeah. Like, yeah, that plus minus shit is real, man. The whole but, Cavs team is standing around the uh, Easter Conference trophy and LeBron's literally just laying on the floor. Yeah, <laughs> he's fucking probably, he looked exhausted at the end of game six, honestly. He's like, like oh, now y'all want to stand around trophies and celebrate, huh? Yeah. Fuck out of here. I'm happy for him because uh, I didn't think they'd get past the first round. So to see them get back to the finals is like, damn. And it's like, as weird as it always is, they stink, but they got a shot. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we're going to get out of here. I'm going to go enjoy watching Sports Center and Absolutely. Talking, talking shit to Ryan and all other Celtics fans. The uh, next sneaker podcast is on the horizon, sponsored by Kicks USA, Real Sneaker Podcast. Uh, we sh- Wait, I'm just waiting for Chad to text me. Got the <laughs> got, text. Got the bread. That's how it we, goes. We had got the bread. That's we a, had got the that's bread. That's how it normally goes. <laughs> um, Roots Picnic. Uh, I might not be here for one of the shows. Maybe we could have. Uh, I don't know, Love or Mitch or AO or somebody come and fill in. True. Uh, 
For one show and then leave uh, immediately. <laughs> one show and one show only. Yeah, one shot, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't one of those uh, Tom Brady, Drew Bledsoe things. Yeah. But, um... Yeah. Anybody out there that's interested in having me and Matt pro, uh, produce your podcast, let us know. Real quick, Slap uh, ran into him. We got to go on Slap show. Slap okay. want us to come on his show. He want to come on here. Slap got he got a one man show on Broadway. Holy shit! Yeah, in September, I'm going to the shit. It's September, I believe. It's either 9th or 24th. He told it to me, but he he sent me all the info. All right. But uh, yeah, Slap got his one man show on Broadway in September. Yeah. So it's like Slap want us to come do um his pod his podcast, and I was like, yeah, you got to come up here. And so shout out Slap. We get all that work. Down these next couple of weeks, but uh, other than that, you anything? Uh, no, my man, Money Talk Earn, who uh, is a tax accountant and all that, he gonna come on the show soon. Talk to y'all about the importance of you know taxes, f- timely filing your taxes and all that shit. So it's like an extension of our financial empowerment, you know, stuff that we try to do on the show here. And then uh, also at some point, my man Reefy Smalls and Butter Knife King from Small World. Uh, Lifestyle gonna come on here. Also, for those of you who don't know, Butter Knife one of the hottest artists in Philly, and he just had like recent like little legal situation going on. So he's definitely an interesting character, somebody that we want to talk to. But uh, Roost Picnic this Saturday, June second. Go to roostpicnic dot com. Get y'all tickets. All the VIP passes and the VIP pit passes are sold out. So it's regular general admission, um, and you can probably finagle your way through uh, whatever the VIP shit is once you get there. Uh, me and Matt don't have any tickets for sale for the forty ninth time, um, and it's it's nothing I can do for you. So have a nice, uh, productive Memorial Day. Y'all be safe, and we'll be back here uh, Saturday uh, with the at the Roost Picnic with the uh, live version of the Rose Podcast. I'm good with that. We out of here. Holler back.